Hello there mortals, I'm Yitzin, welcome back to Hydra Near. This is going to be the last session that we play for at least a long, long time, unless there's updates that come out for the game. I'm going to play this for a couple of hours, we're just going to polish it off, and then we're going to play a little bit of Supermarket Simulator. Going to polish that one off as well, until we get maybe a decent patch for it. But the plan is, oh yeah, that's right, we exchanged all of that money for a boot, right? We threw $100,000 down this well and we got a boot. The plan is basically to start a new series tomorrow, and I know you guys are going to love it. If you guys like Stardew Valley, but also like a little bit of cannibalism and maybe burning people alive, you're going to absolutely love this game that I've got. <laughs> what a way of describing it, though, huh? Wow. Strange. The, uh... Is the game muted? Clean up stream? Clean up stream? Yeah, basically it is. Uh, I want to take a look at the audio, because it doesn't look like we have any... Audio, do we? Doesn't look like it, does it? Weird. I got these new Bluetooth headphones, by the way, and it seems like they are buggy as hell, because every single time I've tried to like play a game with them, they haven't actually worked. <laughs> like yesterday we were trying to play From Dust, and because I had these things connected, it would crash the game to desktop every single time that I tried to fire it up, and it took me about six tries to actually figure out what was going on. Uh, we kind of want to go to the DLC area, don't we? I want to kind of like try and polish off that little mine that we were working on initially, and then I think we'll do that for a couple of hours just to kind of like keep ourselves a little bit busy, and then we're going to go on to the next uh, game. We're, on, we're only going to play this for a couple of hours, I think. Supermarket Simulator, I think, is going to be the main attraction for today. Is it Terraria? No, it is not Terraria, but uh, you are close. You're very, very close, minus the cannibalism and burning people alive, which is actually going to be um, not only featured in this next game that we're going to be playing it's also going to be a um a staple mechanic like it's it's the gameplay loop so that's going to be awesome uh, i'm going to go ahead and hit this we leave us so we can go over to the dlc area done and then we're going to try and figure out what the hell the audio is doing in this game this is so strange did i forget to change the audio devices no i did not what is going on here is this functioning nope my audio drivers just crash Ah, well, I suppose if I wanted to use Bluetooth headphones, I'd actually use them. Going back to these ones. Oh, great, now my whole computer's crashing. Uh, real tech audio. Please? Nope, my audio system is now completely crashing and it's locking me out of everything else. Okay, good. We got it. Hello there, Fallen Sky. How you been? Uh, I've been pretty good. I've been really, really good. Uh, I'm going to try and get the audio working in this game because apparently it's not working whatsoever for some strange reason. Is it like an audio setting, maybe? I'll open the volume mixer, see if that's the thing that's going on here. Nope. Should be working. Weird. Core Keeper? No, still off. I got there, the wrong timing. All right, I'm going to reboot this game, because it actually does seem like the game has entirely crashed with the audio settings for these new earbuds that I got. That sucks. That really sucks. Oh, well. It's going to be like From Dust all over again. Okay, I'll try and reboot it. Here we go. Now, I am going to be playing something a little bit new today. It's going to be the next few Bopulous. A little bit of a teaser right here. Nice. If anybody used to listen to Skid Row, they'll know exactly how good this entire album is. It's basically like Bon Jovi, but not as famous, I think. Is it Tomb Raider? Not even remotely close. In your background? Oh, yes, that was my wallpaper, definitely. All right, do we have audio yet? I can't tell. I literally cannot tell. Just uh, go ahead and fiddle with my audio settings really quickly. What is going on here? Yep, everything should be functioning as intended. Sorry, uh, there's no audio in the game. This is really strange. I've never seen this before. I'll go up to a vehicle and I'll see if that kind of like kicks off the audio. Pretty sure I already checked all the audio settings as well. I'm just going to jump over here as well. There should be a truck on the other side of this bridge right here. Technical difficulties? Yes, there are definitely technical difficulties. What's going on? Is there sound? No. What the hell is going on? <laughs> oh no, I think actually connecting these Bluetooth headphones has completely ruined my entire computer. Seriously? Surely not, right? No, that looks fine. All right, fine. <sighs> What is this game? Uh, this is Hydronia. This is a rather relaxing mining simulator that allows you to make mechanical monstrosities. 
Okay, all of this seems to be working just fine on my end as well. Maybe I need to turn off Bluetooth? Maybe it's actually redirecting all of my sound through something else. What if I just turn this off? Is that fix it? It's working! What the hell? I don't understand what just happened. That is so strange. Oh well, such is life sometimes. Never heard of it before? Yeah, this is a relatively little known indie game. It has been up for about four years now. Honestly, it's really fun. Honestly, it's got to be said, it is actually a really, really fun game. Uh, unfortunately, there are a couple of very indie bugs that pop up frequently, such as uh, kind of like getting stuck on things and all of that kind of stuff. You know, overloading the, the graphics card with just animations and stuff like that. But fortunately, in the menu right here, there is actually a bunch of buttons that allow you to fix all of those on the fly as well. It's happened to me before. What, the, uh, the weird Bluetooth bug? I have no idea what that is or how to fix it. It only seems to be while I am live on YouTube uh, that this happens. Because I got it working last night. I got it working with a bunch of different games, including Shelter 69, which I have almost logged 400 hours in by now. Yeah? Super weird. Uh, what kind of brand of earbuds were you using at the time? Because I just got some edifiers, which aren't like super crisp earbuds, but they are earbuds. They are fairly decent earbuds. On a budget, they're about 40 bucks a pack. And I kind of trust them because they make really, really good home speakers. Razer. Ah, uh, okay. So maybe it's just like a Bluetooth driver thing. Oh, well, we'll come on through this away and we'll try to go back to our base, I think. We'll probably end up polishing off all of these little stores that, oh, that was the guy we ran over. We'll end up uh, building all of these stores over here. There's a jewelry store just ahead of us here. I'll just see what is required to build the store before we go back home. This is going to be an absolute arseload of hardstone blocks, an arseload of core stone bars, and also a little bit of cloutium as well. That is actually pretty expensive. So we need 300 cloutium, 400 core stone, and five and a half thousand of the bricks. We can actually have excess of those resources. It doesn't actually matter that much, but we probably need to actually get to that threshold in the first place, which probably does actually mean filling our mine out a little bit better. Lava? Yes, there's lava literally everywhere here. I never use earbuds for my computer. Okay. It's got to be like, uh, it's got to be a Bluetooth thing, right? Because Bluetooth is still kind of a strangely experimental technology, despite the fact that it's been around for about 20 years? Now it's, it's a 20-year-old system. I'm already on top of my head as we speak. Okay. All right, good. Some good tea. Lemon, honey, and ginger. I rinsed my voice yesterday. I finally got my microphone set up in my uh, little office here so that I can start doing vocal covers on the second channel that I've been trying to work on. My God, it's been really hard to find the time to work on the second channel, but it's kind of coming together. I still won't, like, share it around until everybody uh, has something that they can consume on there, though. All right, good. Uh, so we went around in the last episode, we bought up every mine in the game, which was a bunch of the achievements basically just polished off immediately. We still need to sell 100,000 buckery boos of stuff at a uh, stock market, but we should be fine anyway. Around here is where we're kind of like setting up our main base. Oh, it's actually still running weirdly, which is very strange because we just left this entire region. Uh, we can probably actually see what kind of like weight of everything we're getting. What is this, core stone? Let's see how much core stone we have. We have... We actually almost have enough to get the other shop if we can actually get the uh, giant brick machine over here working. All right, I've already had three bricks pooped out. We don't need 700 weight bricks now. We need 5,400 weight bricks. And we'll just enter that right there. And we'll put these into the mouth of this bad boy. Or we could not. That's also a thing we could do too. Put that in there. Good. And there should be a little reader that tells us exactly how much is in here somewhere. Ah, there we go. So we got 900 kilos so far. Let's probably add another 700. Yep, perfect. And we've got one more brick here that I'll feed into the gullet of this gigantic machine. How much have we got? 2,352 kilograms of stone. We are halfway to that one. That is fantastic. So, down here is our mine. I think the thing we want to work on is essentially getting more machinery up and running, right? Because... That's probably the choke point now. And there's not really a hell of a lot else that we can do. We're still redirecting all of the ice into the water machine over there. Perfect, that's functioning as intended. This one here is still crushing everything that goes in there, which is just fantastic. And we've got an auto repair system. 
basically set up here. I just heard one of them get used as well. That's nice. I love that so much. Okay, so we're probably going to need to get a bunch more repair kits as well. Probably want to maybe get all of this piping out of here. Yeah, let's do that. Let's get all of these pipes topside. Sorry, uh, logic cabling. We'll get it here on this here conveyor belt. And we'll just go up here. Nice. Just walk across this. And we'll drop this cart off up topside here. Right there. Right in the car park. Nice. All right. So we've got a bunch of hand sorters we're not going to use. There is also an achievement for scrapping, though. So we'll probably do that in this uh, little episode here as well. Now, we could probably also go ahead and pipe in all of these. All of these little compressors right here. I'm probably going to do that right now. Let's go and find our pickaxe and we'll start bumping all of the snow out of the way. We could probably do with wasting a little bit of time while we wait for that good old resources to accrue. Okay, we'll come up here. Excellent. And we are going to mine a tiny little trench beneath these machines so that we can start sticking some piping down here. Good. Lovely. Uh, get all of this kind of like mined out as well. Probably going to have to replace all of this kind of like missing ground texture with uh, potentially some flooring. I don't know where we get the big flooring though. We haven't actually found it in the DLC just yet. All right. Keep on coming down here. Excellent. And keep on piping all the way around here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick a lever on. Actually, we probably don't need to pipe each of these in. We probably just need a lever on each of them so we can individually turn them on and off as we need them. All right. Where'd that lever go? We had a lever lying right there. It is. Grab this lever right here. And I'm going to try and jam this onto the side here. See what it does. Does this crush? All right. That means it's on. That opens it. Perfect. So we just need four more levers now at this point. Pretty sure when we get another gem, it's going to drop into here. We need an emerald. None of this is useful to us. Okay, that's a sapphire. Nice, that just got munched. I don't really see any, any emeralds around them. Oh, there's a few actually right here. We can go ahead, pick it up, drop it on the conveyor belt. No, not there. We'll drop it on the conveyor belt. Good God game, cooperate. There we go. And we'll see if this actually does crush it while still kind of like opening. Hello, emerald? I got here way faster than that emerald did. Wait, where'd it go? Did I miss it? Did I did I miss the emerald or something? What happened? <laughs> Game? Okay, let's try to drop that there. Emerald? That was weird. Alright. Let's keep on keeping on. And it should drop into here. And it should get all munched and compressed. Yep, there it goes. Perfect. All right, so we just need four more levers. We don't actually need to entrench out beneath this. We can probably go and do that now. We'll go and do that now. We'll go back to the uh, place. You know the place. And we'll go and get ourselves four more levers. All right, let's grab this here hand sorter. And we'll come back over to the truck. We'll drop this in the back right here. Boop. And let's back out of here. Nice. Oh, I love this so much. It's going to be a little bit bittersweet this session, I think, because this is going to be the last time we come back to this area. I wanted to make a giant mechanical monstrosity under the ground there at Scoria Chamber, where we are currently doing all of our all of our digging, but I don't really think we're going to have the time to go and mash out a bunch of machines, as well as getting all of the sh uh, shops in the Bubble City basically done and dusted. Good. Come all the way over here. It would be so much nicer if we could get a faster car in this area, though. Because there's no faster cars available in this entire DLC, unfortunately. Uh, so, we basically just want to follow the road around, I assume. And we'll end up where we want to be, regardless of how we get there, eventually. Because if we look at our map, there should be a road basically circling this entire island. Yeah, it should be. So we want to go to the Shattered Outpost. We just follow this road. Simple as that. Excellent. Okay, we'll drive like an absolute asshole as well. We'll hit as many people as we possibly can because hit and runs are free in this game. Unlike in real life where it actually does cost you a lot of money and time to do a hit and run. Time being the prison. <laughs> you go to jail for it. Usually, in most cases. I don't know what happens actually. If you do do a hit and run, it's the, it's the country that pressures the charges against you, right? Not the actual people that, that got hit. Because you're a dishonest piece of garbage and, and people like a, a good witch hunt. I feel like that's actually a thing. I feel like people would just spitefully want them in prison, even if they're not going to gain anything from it. 
Especially people who don't have anything to do with the situation in the first place. All right, good. Come around here. And we don't want to go left. That is back to the store and the entrance of the DLC. We want to go straight through this little intersection here. Pretty sure that we only need four levers. Wait, what is that in the back of the truck? Are they levers? One, two levers. Ah, uh, we've only got two, actually. We still need another two more. <laughs> so the trip is well worth the time regardless. We only need two levers now. That's good. I'm glad I actually used my eyes to look in the back of the truck this time. Because usually I don't do that whatsoever. Alright, good. Come all the way just over here. We're still a few dinosaur bones short as well. I don't know where we find those dinosaur bones. Maybe they're underground in some of the, some of the mines. Because I have absolutely zero clue. We'll go and get our levers. Maybe we'll go around. We'll probably get our pickaxe and go into them and then look through all of the ground, which is actually a thing you can do in this game. You can definitely look through the ground to see where all of the uh, limits of your of your dig site are. Whoops. I didn't mean to crash and flip my car 90 degrees sideways. That was a little bit, a little bit of a, a bad thing that just happened there. Okay, we'll come all the way through here. And here we are. We have arrived at our destination. Perfect. I'm going to just go ahead and bring the car in here. We only need two levers. That's all we need. So let's just grab what we need and gap it, I think. Levers? Please? Where are they? There's a spanner hurling unit. Uh, none of these are levers. There they are. Okay. Two of them right here. Logic lever and logic lever. Good. How much is this? This is 168 bucks. Jesus. Daylight robbery. Talk about daylight robbery. My God. We only have 51,000 bucks. <laughs> We're playing like Scrooge McDuck now. All right. Good. Uh, throw that there. Go ahead. Grab this and throw it on the truck right there. Go ahead, grab this one. We'll come along here. Drop that on the truck. And now we are gapping it out. We're done here. We are literally done here. Unless there's a scrapper. In which case, we can get another achievement. Scrap. Scrapper. Scrapper. What is this? This is... Ice. Okay, that guy buys water. Hilariously. What? Why would anybody in this area buy ice? Like, it makes sense for any other area in the game, but not here. It'll take old town efforts at rebuild New Glade. Or maybe just one generous hydroneer. That's my character. He looks like my character. What an asshole. All right, good. I'm going to back out of here just in case there is actually a scrapper. It doesn't look like it. No, I don't think there's a scrapper around here. Okay. So, still worth looking for because we haven't scrapped anything for the Chivo. I don't even know what scrapping anything does. I know you get, like, scrap metal, but I, I don't know what to do with it. I think that we can maybe melt it down into iron, potentially, which wouldn't really make a lot of sense, especially if we're scrapping things made of wood. Okay, we'll come over here. Maybe it just gives you an item that you can sell to get the value of the scrapped item back. Maybe that's it. I'd say. We can only speculate, really. I'm also now suspicious that the bones for the dinosaur are on the side of that mountain. On the area that we haven't actually been to yet. Not that we haven't been to the mountain. We've been there a few times. We even made a machine up there. But there's no bones on this kind of like flat land down here. So I assume there's got to be up there somewhere. Okay, we'll keep on keeping on. Maybe in that little pocket? No. They kind of glow gold as well, so it's pretty easy to see them from a distance. We just need a few more of those bones. I think we've got a ribbon up back as well. Yeah, we definitely have a rib. I'm going to zoom all the way out so maybe we can get a, like, nice bird's eye view. Uh, that's not where we want to go. That is the old ass area that we do not want to go back to. That was our first dig site just over there. It sucked ass. It was literally a waste of our time to have even been there in the first place. Okay, we'll keep on keeping on. N lovely little Aurora Borealis over there. Or Aurora Australis. I don't know, actually. I can't tell the difference between all the different Auroras in the world. I've met a person named Aurora once. I can definitely tell her apart from uh, the kind of anomaly that you see in the sky, but only barely. She's got nice eyes. So, you know, sometimes hard to tell when you're looking at her whether or not she's a some kind of natural anomaly or actually just a human. 
Okay, we'll come all the way through here. Go through there. And around this corner here. I almost just hit somebody. I'm kind of regretting having not hit them at all. A little embarrassing. Maybe the dinosaur bones are just kind of like randomized. Maybe they're placed in random places all over the game. And then once you get enough of them, they spawn. They spawn in different places. Because we have seen a couple over in this area here that we are currently at on the road. In places I am almost certain that we would not have missed them at. All right. Come over here. Look around this corner. I've got to keep my eyes peeled. Like an orange. All right, there's a brazier off in the distance. I've also crashed into a brazier. That's embarrassing. Okay, what else are we looking at? Uh, nothing. There is literally nothing around here worth our time. We could probably actually just go to the high ground and take a, a nice big high vantage point. Like up here. See if there's any bones around the place. Uh, no, it does not look like it. Hello there, Fallen Sky. Okay. <laughs> How you doing? Okay, we'll come on through down here. And we want to hook up all these machines. Right here. Can I please get some advice here? Absolutely. What do you need advice with? I'm something of an agony aunt. Going to go ahead and jam that right there. And we'll come along the side. Grab another one. Excellent. Put this one here. Never mind. I got to eat. Okay. My advice to you is go and eat. <laughs> it's advice that a lot of people don't tend to, to follow these days, which is kind of strange. I've noticed diet culture has gotten really, really weird over the last few years. Like, people are afraid of wheat now, which just doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Okay, let's keep that enabled. Let's keep that enabled. Let's keep that enabled. And we'll keep this one enabled as well. Okay, good. So what is down here now? It's still kind of dark, but I think we're basically just getting used to it at this point. Let's go and see how expensive it is to build another machine. Because if we can get snowballing resources, then we should be absolutely golden for the future, right? Where are they? They're probably on the back of the truck. The little tokens that we use to manufacture more machines. All right, here is a grinder. Not interested. Where's the other one? Probably underneath this hand sort of right here. Good. Here it is. So we need 500 iron and 100 quartium? Core stone? I think that's core stone. 500 iron, 100 core stone. We could probably actually do better now, though, to be honest. Let's go into the town and see if we can't afford the other machinery token. Because we may be able to build some tier 2 machines at this point. I'll let you know when I'm back and then tell you when I'm ready. Yeah, yeah, you take your time, my dude. You take your time. And while there's no secrets here on this channel, I do tend to give reasonable advice without kind of, like, screwing people over. <laughs> Stay safe. Stay safe, my dude. Okay, we'll come all the way down here and go back into town. Probably also need to refuel our car, simply because the little orange light on the side of the truck is blinking. Indicating that we are, in fact, running out of fuel. It'd be embarrassing if we ran out of fuel before we got to fill it up. We do have a little lava in the back of the truck, though, so that should be more than enough to actually get us to the city, or at least get us to drive to some lava to <laughs> fill the, back, the bucket back up. Okay, here's the bridge. I'm going to go ahead, go over this lump right here. And we'll go all the way around here. Yes. And we'll stop right here, I think. Good. Excellent. What a dangerous-ass place this is. Oh, I think I just burned myself. Okay, we'll grab this here bucket, and we'll try and get up on top of this truck, which actually does seem borderline impossible nine-tenths of the time. Please? <laughs> I think because we're in a, a bit of a slope, it's a little bit sus to get over. Okay, get that. Maybe we'll just go up the front. I don't know why they didn't make the base game climbable like this. Probably makes the most sense. Put that there. Excellent. And we'll drop that there. Fill it up. Get up here. Onto the truck. And we will drop this right there. Nice. Drop this back in there. This is probably the last bucket we are going to need to refill the truck with. So I'm going to go here, drop that in there until we get the clipping texture. Nope, one more. You'll know when you see it. It's it's a mismatched texture that kind of like clips out into the truck. Never mind. I think they may have actually fixed it. Good for them. Uh, we'll get another bucket of lava in case we get stuck out here again at some point. Drop that there. Now we'll get on the back of it. 
Okay, so we're after the tier two shop, which should be to our immediate right. It could be to our left. Actually, it's right there. It's literally right here. So we can't buy that machine, but we can get these tokens here. Jesus, that is expensive. Oh my God. That is a drill. So we need 700 core stone, 400 cladium. We also need 2000 tokens, which we don't even remotely have. Okay, we'll go and make some of the more basic machinery then. Am I late? No, Liam the Destroyer, you are most certainly not late. Welcome back to the stream. Got yesterday from dust, huh? I was showing everybody the uh, the finished product, the finished video that I made. I edited the kind of like last bit to be a lot funnier. Um, it's going to be pretty good. It's going to be pretty good. But the only way people are going to know that it was a really good video is if they actually finish the entire thing. <laughs> Which I highly doubt anybody is actually going to sit through because it's like a six hour video. But I included the uh, the part where we we reviewed the game. God, that actually had me in stitches as well. That was so funny. Okay, we'll come up here. Oh, the game functions as intended. Ha! Huh? It really didn't. The Last Jedi? Nope, it's the Last Hygienia? No, there are no Last Jedis here. Wait, why did they call it the Last Jedi if there were going to be more Jedis coming out? That never occurred to me. All I remember about the, the climax of the whole nine Star Wars films is that they should have just left it at six. Uh, basically because of that one scene where, um, you know, the, the the ninth movie, where they're all riding a bunch of unicorns and horses on the outside of a spaceship without any um, any respirators or gravity or anything like that, and they're just, like, running along the horses. that They're actually staying on the ship without floating off into space or decompressing. And they're all screaming, which, quite famously, uh, everyone knows you can't, you can't hear anybody scream in space because of Alien. And on top of that... Uh, they had a bunch of automatic cannons firing on them while they were running around, and every single one of them missed. I don't know how that's impossible. They literally outsmarted AI. So we need 100 core stone, 500 iron. Probably actually got both of those things. I forgot the last part, so I really need to watch. No, you don't, my dude. It's really disappointing. Did only remember what was good about it. Never remember anything else. Okay, so we need... I'm going to take this with me so we can actually, like, create a little bit of a... A budget for these machines. All right, we need 100 of this stuff, I think, Cloutium. Let's see how much we have. This is... We've got almost 300. If we wait a little bit longer, we should be able to get ourselves some more Cloutium here. Oh, there's some Cloutium right there. Nope, that's gold. That's awkward. Okay, so we have almost 300 Cloutium. That's pretty good. What about the iron? Let's see how much iron we have. We should have quite a bit of iron, actually. We have five and a half thousand kilograms. Okay, that's more than enough. So, we'll wait until we get 300 of this here, Cloutium, and then we'll go up north of the volcano. We'll go and make some more machines. Okay, what do we want to do while we're waiting then? Because there isn't a hell of a lot that we can do. Come down here, I suppose. We could go and get some more of these platforms so that we could actually create a little workshop. Maybe. Or, no, here's a better idea. Let's get our big hammer out and we'll just make ourselves some, uh, what is that? We'll, uh, the, uh, building. We'll get the building hammer out. We'll make sure we don't accidentally pick anything up. All right, so that's one of the bricks. Where the, there they are. A bunch of them over here. Just gonna kind of like stick these around the place so we can use the area that we need. So that goes there. This one can go there. A little square over here, I suppose. Uh, this one as well will go right there. Good. And this one here. This one goes right there. Excellent. Uh, let's get our building hammer out. We'll knock these into place so we don't accidentally move them. I kind of like the layout that we have here. So we'll make sure that that's all knocked down as well. Also, this grind wheel, done. Get all that knocked down. Good. Everything is basically sorted. Gonna knock that down. Uh, we're not gonna move any of this machinery either. So let's go ahead and just make sure we don't go ahead and knock all of this down as well. Good. And put that there, put that there, there. Good. All of these platforms are going to stay exactly where they are. Sorry, not platforms. They are not platforms. They are belts. Conveyor belt. Excellent. They debuffed lightsabers. Yeah, and they buffed, uh, they buffed Ray. They buffed Ray to the point where you literally didn't need anybody else in the entire film series. Like, Ray was was quite clearly supposed to be the entire focus of that film. 
of that trilogy. I think they were trying to, like, go for a Dune feel, but all they ended up doing was just uh, making a really, really crap universe no one really wants to be a part of anymore. All right, good. Uh, come over here. And knock that in place. Knock all of these logic compressors into place as well. Good. The piping, I don't think we want to move it. We do have a complete sorting system, though, so I think actually it's just knock it into place and hope for the best. Knock that. Knock that. Knock that. I'm going to go behind all of these so I can actually see what I'm doing. Knock that in place. Good. This one. This one. This one. This one. This one. This one. And we got that one. Great. There's an emerald there. Oh, I think that's the uh, the emerald that we initially found, right? The one that we missed. The one that we misplaced. We were looking for it and we couldn't find it. Okay, I'll stick this back into the tool rack. Excellent. All right. Now, we could probably check the weights and see if we've got enough of this here uh, not coarser and cloutium. We need 300. Ah, perfect. All right, good. That's one. Uh, we'll put this over here. And we also need to get ourselves the iron, which is in here. Boop. There you go. This should be around about five and a half to 6,000 kilos by this point. Put that one right there. And we need the little token right here. We're going to make three new machines. And hopefully that should be enough, right? There we go. Excellent. Let's go up the, let's go up the volcano. And hope for the best. How was your day? My day has been excellent, my dude. Uh, I woke up to a nightmare, but fortunately, nightmares don't really phase me anymore. And it turns out Yinset was also woken up by a nightmare. It's weird as well, because yesterday we both had a really cursed day too. So I feel like now the two of us are kind of like twinning, I suppose you could have, with our quality of days. Which is weird, because she has a day job. I obviously don't have a day job. I, I stream. I'm trying to build a platform. That's, that's what I'm doing with all of my time while she's off at work. But she had everything that could have gone wrong yesterday on her end went wrong at work. And everything that could have gone wrong on my stream yesterday with From Dust went wrong. I was being assured by people during the first hour that I was playing of Dust that these issues are temporary and they only are affecting me. No one's ever had those issues before. And yet they continued happening for me until the game ended. My God, it was so embarrassing. Well, maybe not embarrassing is the word. Not from my perspective, but it was embarrassing from Ubisoft's perspective because it was their game, and their game hardly functioned. I also watched someone beat Undyne the Undying today. Nice! She's a fun fight, actually. Uh, she's kind of tricky with the control scheme that Undertale is limited to, but ultimately, like, once you beat her, she's pretty fun. You've had fun. You've had fun beating her. Even if um, the controls are, like, kind of frustrating. Which I did find to be the case several times. All right, good. I had to uh, do this wee technique where I shifted my hand from my Bluetooth controller to my arrow keys. So that I could kind of like accommodate myself for being able to block those... What are, I don't want to call them shielded quick time events, but it's pretty much what they were. You know, where the shield kind of like rotates, right? How about yourself? Have you ever done like a genocide run on Undertale? It's pretty fun. I do quite like it. Sans isn't fun, though. Uh, Sans is, quite frankly, just uh, frustrating. Yeah, for the sake of frustration. All right, good. It's also not accessible to anybody using a controller. Okay, so coming all the way up here. I got so well, I still remember the first attack. I killed her like three months ago. Nice. Nice. You'd love to see it. Okay, we'll come all the way up this way. It's kind of funny how in the genocide run of Undertale... You kind of, you breeze your way through most of the game with only like three bosses that really give you any grief whatsoever. It's pretty weird. It's, it's pretty strange. But it kind of also makes sense. If you're willing to kill everybody, then you're probably just going to go straight for the jugular, right? Okay, we'll come over here. Elevator's going up. We just missed it. That's a shame. That's fine. I can wait. Do, 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 rip. That's what I consider elevator music. Pretty sure I heard it on a TV show sometime. Up, 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 right down, left, down, right, down, left, right up. Oh, nice. I don't know what combination you just did, but you just made me uh, crash into lava. Pretty crazy, actually. All right, good. I'm more of a up, down, up, down, um, AABB kind of guy. Right, we're here. 
So we want to put the token on the machine so it knows exactly what to craft. Where the hell would that be? Probably this podium right here. Right, those are tools. Not useful to us. Good. We'll stick that there. And now we want to drop all of these ingots into the crucible, which should be... I don't remember where it is. Is that it there? I think that's it there. Yep, that's definitely it there. Excellent. All right, we get some more. Good. That was the first attack. Okay, cool. I, I've got a little thing against having to, like, spend hours and hours and even days just learning something's attack set to be able to beat it. That's not how I play games. I, I like to be challenged when it comes to video games. If you have to memorize a boss in a video game, you're not actually being challenged whatsoever. Uh, memorizing a boss is just uh, quite a lazy way to art artificially inflate difficulty, in my opinion. But I suppose under the Undertale community, that's probably going to be a bit of a hot take, right? Okay, not like that, apparently. Nope, not like that either. Oh, please don't fall over. Or you could fall over and fall off the back of the truck as well. That's exactly what we want. Very nice. You love to see it. You love to see it. Let's go all the way back here. Great. Done. Keep on keeping on up here. Is this going to fall out the back? No, it's going to stay still. Perfect. That's exactly what we want. Now, with these ingots, we want to stick them straight back into this here crucible. Boop. And this one right here as well. I'm sticking it through the wall. We're doing a bit of an exploit. Okay, we want one more of these machines. And then after that, we're going to want one more of those machines. We're making three of them. Good. All right, we'll pick these up. These piping hot molten metal ingots with our bare hands because we are able to do so. Mm -hmm. That's why we are making the big bucks. Nobody else in this place has uh, any money. I'll just drop that out of the way, I suppose. While we go and make this last machine here. Oh, I didn't even look at like the uh, the little perks of them. What is this? This, uh, oh, they don't have perks. That's strange. I think they're supposed to have perks. They're supposed to have levels, right? Mm -hmm. All right, drop that there. Take this one. Drop it over here. We're going to plug these in. We should be able to get the tier 3 store up and running pretty shortly. Uh, for now, though, we're probably going to want to go ahead and start doing some quests so we can actually buy some of the tokens required to get the upgraded items. All right, good. And we want this one, too. Great. What game is this? This is Hydraneer. It is a fantastic little relaxing indie game that we are finishing off today. And by finishing off, I mean it's a perpetual game that has no ending. But this is going to be the last episode of it. Oops, just flip the truck. It's absolutely fine. Don't mind that whatsoever. Oh, what are these guys up to? I didn't realize there were people up here. So hey. you're the Hydraneer everyone's been chatting about. Do you need a, a lemon or something? A vitamin C tablet? Jesus, lady. I'm right glad those hydrosaurs are extinct. Yeah, great. Uh, I'm going to go up to some high ground in case there's actually dinosaur bones around here. We only need about three or four more of them until we've completely polished off the museum and we don't have to worry about it anymore. All right, nothing over here. I don't actually think there will be any dinosaur bones up here, though. <sighs> Is it I feel bad for killing him? What, Papyrus? No, I don't think so whatsoever. Although, uh, if you wait for my theory to come out, you'll probably feel a lot better knowing that it was... A bit of a mercy that you killed him. Okay, we'll come over this away. Nope, there are no dinosaur bones anywhere around here. We still have a rib in the back of the truck. Maybe we should actually go ahead and just deposit it. I also think that maybe we don't want to go down that way. We probably actually want to go all the way over the other side of the mountain and then just go through, right? Now nah, we'll go back this way. We'll follow the road, I suppose. Oh, wee! Okay, didn't mean to land on that. Let's go ahead and try and land on our feet. Boop! Almost did not land on our feet. A little embarrassing, but that's fine. Okay, we'll come all the way down this little path right here, and I think we'll go ahead and deposit the rib of this dinosaur. See if we can't actually get, like, la the last of the dinosaur bones to spawn, because I'm pretty sure that is how they work. I don't think they've got, like, dedicated places that they just sit. Wait, what is that? Way off in the distance. I'd say... I don't think it's a dinosaur bone, though. Maybe there's a dinosaur bone on top of those glaciers. Whoops, I think I just crashed into the lava. Uh, all right, I have to unstuck myself. That's, well, that was handy. Thank you, game. All right, great. I want to see on top of those glaciers, though. 
Okay, so let's follow the road around because we do want to deposit this bone. We should be good. Human, try getting past this. What is it? Some are you are you about to attach some bones in the chat? I hope they're safe for work. All right, good. Come all the way around here. That's our destination. We're going into that bubble. Still really weird about the dinosaur bones. We've kept a really, really good eye out for them. Maybe they're in, like, these houses here. Perhaps. Are they? Maybe? I don't think so. I don't think they're actually in this house right here. But it never hurts to check, does it? Okay, we can't go in there. Yeah, no, I didn't see anything. Okay. My fabled blue attack? Uh, your fabled blue attack, that's a rough one, actually. That's super rough. I hate having to stand still for long periods of time. My ADHD can't handle it. All right, now that we're in here, I'm going to go ahead and deposit our bone into the museum. And no, the museum is not a uh, code word for something. There is literally a museum here that requires our bone to be deposited into this hole right here. Done. All right, we've got all of the ribs. We are missing a whole leg. And the end of the tail. I think there might be a couple more of the tail there. All right, good. Let's come out here and we'll go back to our little mine. We'll mine out some more of the area and then I think we'll just plug these machines in as if nothing happened. They should be the same tier. They should have the same kind of like structure and layout as the other machines we have. So it's going to be absolutely fine regardless. But actually doing it, that's the hard part. Okay. I'm all the way down here. Still weird. Still weird about all the dinosaur bones. If we drive over one, then we can definitely say that, yes, depositing the dinosaur bones in the museum actually does spawn the next ones. All right, we're almost home. We're almost home. We're going to do a little bit of digging, and then we're going to set up some more machines. We'll see what the set at tier three store actually has to offer before we end the session. There's literally nothing around us. <laughs> <laughs> Super strange. Okay, this guy's got a crazy voice, doesn't he? Sebastian Bach. He's a bit of a wash-up now, though, unfortunately. Skid Row used to be such a, a really, really famous band in kind of like the early 90s, maybe late 80s? I think they came to prominence around about 1989. But don't quote me on that. Quote literally anybody else. Hell, quote Philomena Kunk on what she thinks the date is, more so than me. All right, let's put this in here. But all I see of Skid Row these days is not really them going around playing shows. All I see is Sebastian Bach going to parties, and he's like three times the age of the of the people who are going to these parties that he's going to. It's really strange to look at. I don't like Sans second stage five attack. I don't really like the Sans fight in the <laughs> like uh, by any means. It's just too repetitive, and it's a it's a little bit too hostile, too player hostile. Okay, we'll go ahead, grab this machine, we'll go down south side, and then we'll try and plug them in one by one. We've got three of these bad boys, so we could probably just get the pipes in place as we come down here. All right, so we probably want two machines here, or we could put them deeper into the mine, which would require a pickaxe, which is top side. I think maybe, yeah, all right, let's go ahead. I'll take this top side because we don't need it down there. We'll get rid of it. We'll just throw it out of the way. And then we will go ahead and bring our lava pipes down south side. We need like three of these T-junctions, I think. And maybe also... Maybe we also need... Nah, not a hell of a lot else. I just want to make sure that it actually functions here. All right, that doesn't work. There we go. Perfect. Put that there. We also need some elbows. So two more of those T-junctions. Plug in two more of those machines. And then three elbows. It'd be nice if we actually had a lava pipe cart, but we don't. A little bit of a shame. All right, there you go. Two, and we've still got one more T-junction right there as well. We're obviously going to use that. But we can only carry one thing at a time, unfortunately. Put that there. Good. Come up here. Run down there, I suppose. Grab this. We actually only just have enough to pipe in three machines without having to buy any more lava pipes, too. It's pretty funny. Okay, I'll put that one there. It's going to lower the pressure a little bit, but it's not going to be so bad that we can't really do anything. All right, good. That goes there. Let's go ahead and get a couple of elbows. I'm actually going to go ahead and go up the conveyor belt, I think would be the best option. Three 
elbows. One, and there's only three elbows left. I love that. I love that for us so much. Okay, we kind of took a weird way of getting done here, but it still functioned. There. Now, does this work? Let's see. Yes! Great. All right, that's pumping out resources. Love that. Come back up here using the conveyor belt as a staircase. Why the hell not? And we need two more of these elbows. Hopefully they are actually going to plug in and play where we put them. Because there were two little points right there that just flat out do not allow you to uh, harvest any resources from there. So we might get that same issue. We may get that same issue. Hard to say. Okay, we'll come over here. Jump over this way. All the way down here. <sighs> Fun fact, in your neutral run, Asgore destroys your mercy button to have a fair fight against you. I did not know that. I never actually wanted to spare Asgore in any way, shape, or form. Like, even during the genesis, the, sorry, the pacifist run that we did, Asgore was still a bit of a dick, in my opinion. Okay, now we just need the machines. He's also a compulsive liar, just as a character. But it kind of makes sense once you understand his motivations. Again, like, all of this is going to come out when I actually put my theories out there. I'm going to be doing, like, character and event spotlights. Rather than uh, one huge theory, which would have taken me probably close to a year to have made. Uh, turn that on. Is it pumping out resources? Yes. Yes, it is. Great. All right, we'll come down here. Down our little artificial maintenance hatch. And we want one more of these little machines. And we should be golden. We're going to need a lot of Cloutium now, by the way. We're going to need heaps of it. It seems to be the hardest one to generate, unfortunately. Maybe we go down there and we start shoveling a bunch of crap into a bucket. And then we uh, kind of like wash it out. Might be a good idea. Might be a really good idea. Let's put that one there. Is it functioning? No, we have to hit the lever first. Boop. Yeah, that one's busted. That one doesn't actually want to work. Well, that was predictable. So what we can do is we can actually stick another T junction just at the end of here. And then we'll pipe in that elbow that we've already got. So we need a straight pipe to come down here. We should be fine. Oh, that thing's munching like crazy. Wow, already at 3.7 thousand kilos of stone. That's pretty crazy, actually. Right, good. Get this one straight pipe, and I'm going to plug it in where the machine here is obviously not running. I can see this wheel not spinning right there, so pick that up and put this straight in its place. There we go. Put this one there, I think. We're going to need our pickaxe now. We'll come all the way up here. We'll find our pickaxe. Well, it's probably next to the logic machines, because I think that's what we were using to mine it out with. There it is. Great. Ah, which character in Undertale is my favorite? You know what? It's got to be Flowey. He's got such an enormous amount of character depth that kind of exceeds what the scope of the game. He's probably got to be my favorite character. L like, the depth of Flowey is insane. The character depth. Uh, let's keep on busting all of this out. Or Asriel. That really depends on what you want to call him, to be honest. Unmask this. Good. Get all of that crap out of the way so we can put a machine there. Very cash money. Love this. Love this. I'm also going to make a little access point for us around the side here, too. So that we can go around this machine if we ever need to. It's highly unlikely that we ever will, but... You know, you never actually know. You never know in this game. Right, let's keep mining this out. Good. So we don't hit our head when we jump. Uh, that should be fine, right? Uh, we'll keep on mining some of this out as well. There's already a conveyor in front of us here. We are going to have to expand out the mine if we want anything more, though. Go ahead and grab this here. T-junction. Put it right here. Oops. There. Good. And now the... Elbow should be piping out. Perfect. And let's stick this one right here. Whoops. That's the wrong orientation. Put that right there. Ah, good. It's functioning. All right. How much resources are we getting? Quite a few, actually. We're getting heaps of resources. I love that so much. Mine would have to be Medita. What, like, uh, before or after it was a purpose-built machine to, um, to kill humans with? <laughs> All right. Good. Man, this thing's pumping out resources at a pretty alarming rate, to be quite honest. I think, honestly, we're going to just pipe the sorting system down into the into the second mine tier, when we can actually get some more machines, if we get that far in the session. It's likely we won't. It's likely we really won't get that far in the session. Okay. 
wait for that gold to go through. How much of this do we have? How much of this have we generated? We have generated 44 kilos. We are so far away from that tier 3 store with this. It's crazy. Let's try and make a couple of our uh, quests. We've got a couple of quests that we can actually like pin up and start making, right? Do we take any of those quest boards with us? No. That was stupid of us. What about this one? So this guy wants a 35 white gold bar. But seriously, that's it. And he lives in a new glade. Going to give us 140 scout guild tokens for it as well. Okay, let's go ahead and get our gold poured. And we'll cut this in half a bunch of times. How much is this? 2.8 thousand kilograms. We're definitely going to need to saw that a bunch of times. We do have a saw as well, which is pretty cool. Let's go ahead and put this building hammer in the first slot of this right here. So we can actually see where our saw has gone. Okay. Now, I don't know... How heavy that one's going to be, but we can always check, right? Good. How heavy is that? 88. Okay, we probably need to cut that in half again. So that should be 44. Great. Probably going to need a dump bucket as well. Let's go ahead and grab a bucket. What game is this? Hey, there, case the, blo the Blocks Fruits YouTube. This is Hydroneer. It's a relaxing strategy puzzle, I would probably uh, call it. Probably the best strategy puzzle I've ever played on account of its relaxing nature. It's basically, you have to micromanage everything at the beginning of the game here in Hydroneer, but as you kind of like get to the mid game, you just create huge, huge stacks of, uh, of automation. Uh, we've got an entire sorting system out here that kind of like has a wee place for every single ore and ingot in the game, and we are processing them into usable items before they even really hit our sorting system too. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and throw this back into the gold pile right there. Excellent. Put that right there in case we need it. So, we have now got one gold ingot with the weight that some dickhead asked for. Great. Uh, let's throw it here. Excellent. So, now we've got this one. Damn, that's going to be a heavy-ass sword. It needs to be made of gold. Entirely made of gold. We need it in the... Uh, basically, we just need 100 kilograms of gold being each part. All right. Throw this down here. We'll get our saw back out. There it is. One, two, three, four. That should be enough. Go ahead and jam this into the bucket right here. Get it out of the way. And how much is this ingot right here? This is 180. So if we cut that in half, we've got 90. And that'll be the second and third gold bar that we need. Okay, we also need a 100 kilo gold bar. Was that this one, maybe? 904, that's a little bit excessive. Uh, let's actually take this one, we'll drop it on the ground there. Let's cut it in half. Boop. So both of those should be part two and three. This one here is 360 kilograms, throw that on the ground. What about this one? That is 1.14 thousand. And this one is 180. So this one should be piece number one. We'll try and drop them in order into this furnace right here as well. Good. And these two are parts two and three. One there. Grab this one. And part three. Great. Hopefully that is going to cook right there. Yeah, it's definitely cooking. Excellent. Uh, we'll throw these back into the bucket. And then we'll throw them back into the crucible that we are using to consolidate all of our ores together. That was close. Almost threw it in the iron. There we go. Pour it in there. Excellent. Put that straight back down there. Nice. Run back. Guess what I have for dinner? Yeah, I'm going with steak. Pesto pasta for dessert. An ice cream sandwich and a lava cake. Ooh, nice. Yes, this is the last hydrogen here. This is going to be the last episode that we record of this game until there's like a major patch or something like that. So we want a sword. That's going to be number one and two and three are going to be that tiny little pile over there. We need this blacksmithing hammer on hand. Just drop that on the ground right there. Okay. Un, de, and of course, pla. Now let's grab this. Boom! Excellent. We've made a golden sword which satisfies the requirements. I don't know who we give this to, but I'm pretty sure that we could just kind of like read the, the quest log, right? All right, we also got that guy's ingot as well. Throw that there. Great, that has latched onto the truck. I'm happy with this. They look like copper ingonets. Yes, they do look like copper ingonets. It'd be kind of nice if there was maybe smelting or something in this game. Like, smelting into alloys rather than just kind of, like, making core items. 
But I'm not entirely sure the developers are particularly interested in doing so. I don't know why either. It would be so easy to program additional ores into this game. Because you've already got the ingot texture. You just change the colour of that same ingot. And also the, the ores. You just change the colour of those ores. And keep the programming you've got for all the, all the other ones as well. Right, this one is Eileen and New Glade. That is the big city. She wanted the sword. This one here is Redwald and New Glade. Just wants the ingot, which we have right here. Keep that over there. And we've also got this one. Oh, this guy wanted a ring. Okay. We'll get this guy a ring as well. Ethel and New Glade. That's also somebody in the city. So we need a, wait, 30 golden ingot. Right here. Great. So this is probably a little bit heavy. 2.8. Good. All right. So from 2.8. Oh, God. What's half of 2.8? 14. 700. 350. Uh, my brain, 175. What's half of 175? That is around about 80, 40. That one should be heavy enough. Right? Yes, 44. Good. Right, excellent. So this is going to be a piece of the ring. We also need a ruby. I'm just going to use the entire ruby because, quite frankly, we're not really going to need any gigantic rubies, right? Yep, I'll take that one. I wonder how heavy this thing is. This thing is... It's 152 kilos. That's pretty... That's pretty heavy. Uh, what about this one? Can we just grab this one and use that instead? Maybe? How heavy is this? 3.1. Where's the quest? This one right here? A nine weight ruby. Okay, we could probably actually not waste our gigantic ruby. We need a chisel, basically, to divvy it up, though. Uh, this is sapphire ruby is right here. I don't think there's anything in here. We only need, like, two more rubies. Okay, that's one... Not going to use the one that actually makes the sorting system a sorting system. Probably another ruby just over here that got stuck. No, just diamonds and sapphires. Yuck! Gross. Oh, well, we'll stick them on the sorting system anyway. One there. One there. And one here. There's a ruby right there. Gorgeous. Love to see it. And we just need one more now. It's, we only need the one more. Sorry for leaving so fast during your Undertale Yellow playthrough. I'd score the next day. Dude, you're absolutely fine. The stream goes on without viewers, regardless of whether or not people are here or not. The only reason I'm streaming is to kind of like incorporate a little bit of a social element into my long play videos as well, because I can only do it for so long. I can only do it for so long. Yes, gold. Ah, oh, the advice I'm seeking. What should I do if I feel lost, like feeling life between exercising and just leaving my body alone? If you know what I mean. Feeling life between exercising and just leaving my body alone. What, you mean like, uh, is it an issue of motivation? Because I, uh, I actually do have a condition called neurogenic fatigue, which massively impacts motivation. I get um, very, very nasty fatigue bursts, and if I overexert myself for X amount of time in a day, unfortunately, I kind of like crash, so to speak. I'll be bedridden for a few days, which is a little bit of a shame. Uh, it's not necessarily motivation that does that. That's just kind of like a consequence. Oh, that's Sapphire. Don't really care about that. We want these big rubies, don't we? This is big yet? Let's see. It's, like, um, it's, it's one of those things. you just got to be a lot more onto it with yourself. And there's no other real secret to it. you just got to tell yourself to do something. And if you don't really do it, you got to punish yourself. Part of that reason? Makes sense? Yeah. There's no kind of like... I would say probably getting somebody out and off the couch and going and doing something is one of the world's largest markets, especially on social media. There are so many influencers trying to sell you their products that tell you, hey, if you, if you buy this product, you'll have unlimited amounts of energy. You can go do exercise, you'll lose lots and lots of weight. It doesn't work like that. You, you have to do it for yourself. What they're selling you is basically a placebo that uh, kind of like encourages you through the concept of sunk cost fallacy to actually, you know, go and Go and do exercise. But unfortunately, the simple fact of the world is that you've got to talk yourself into it. You've got to find reasons to go out there. My reason is that I have a YouTube channel, and the better I look, the more people come to the channel. <laughs> and before then, I was, I was exercising, but I was quite sedentary about it because, again, like if I exercise too long, I'll be bedridden. Um, i got about half an hour each day of standing that I can kind of like spend on things. I spend about 10 minutes of it on chores, which I can blast through real fast now because I'm quite practiced at it. And the other 20 minutes I actually exercise for. Have you ever played Deltarune? Yes, I most certainly have. It's on the channel. I um, I got every single ending that is available so far in Deltarune. It's all on the channel. Uh, you can watch that one literally right now if you if you want. The 
I played it before I played Undersale as well. I didn't actually realize that Undersale would be such a good game until I played Deltarune and everyone was all like, oh, if you like this, you're going to love um, Deltarune. So I played Deltarune, loved it, went back to Undertale. Got to be said, Deltarune is better in almost every single way. <laughs> like the combat functions. Oh, this is another ruby. That's what we're waiting for. Perfect. That's what we're standing here monitoring the, um, the conveyor belts for. Very good. So this will go into here. And we should get another big gem. So you know how when you exercise, you feel different? Like my abs, for example, I was exercising and I thought I had stomach problems the whole time, but really I was air swallowing and had good because of stress. That is a rough one. That is a really rough, rough one. Uh, I have actually been told that if you take like an antacid, right before you do exercise, it does settle down good from, maybe not the actual feeling itself, but it stops the, the kind of like stuff from bubbling up from beneath. That's a rough one. You kind of got to find some exercises that do accommodate your issues, though. That's pretty pretty much it. That's pretty much the trick. I don't think we can heat up this uh, ruby. Put this here, and if we can make this ring... Perfect. Done. So that's another quest done and dusted. We'll exchange this for some tokens. Good. <sighs> I'm going to wait till the stream ends. Okay, my dude. Uh, the... There is no such thing on my channel as a content drought. Don't worry. If there is a game that you think I've played, worst that could happen is you look it up on the channel and it just isn't there, which means I probably haven't played it yet. Or, um, best case scenario, you look it up on the channel, it's there. And it's full format as well. I don't have gear, gear good anymore and ear swallowing. I kind of, I do a bit of ear swallowing as well, unfortunately. It's not like good related. It's just kind of because I have bad breath control. But... Last, end of last year, I started learning how to do death course screams. You've probably seen them on the channel quite a bunch. The big, the big, Rose! those, right? Uh, you see those pretty frequently. I learned really good breath control with death course screaming, and it's also an excellent ab workout. So now I don't ever have to exercise my abs because I always have abs. In fact, my abs are probably the biggest muscles I have in my body right now. You know, minus the obvious one, my tongue. Um, so... <laughs> Yeah, there aren't really any secrets to exercise. You just got to find something worse for you. Um, in saying that, though, I haven't been to the gym in a couple of weeks. Got to say, I am already feeling quite a significant amount of depression because of it. I don't allow it to, like, affect me because I'm stubborn and bullheaded and all that kind of stuff uh, in all of the good ways. But at the same time, I got tendonitis in my wrists down here. And I was doing real heavy weights at the gym. I was I was able to squat 80 kilos after two weeks of being in there. No, that's not including the bar. That's just 80 kilos of plates on each side. Um, I was leg pressing 325. I was doing four sets of six of that. What else? Uh, chest press. I managed to get to 55 on each arm. So I would have been pressing 110 kilos in total with fairly decent form. But I got tendonitis in my wrists because I was doing hammer curls and because I was doing hammer curls with like 25 to 30 kilo dumbbells in each hand, um, every time I would bring them down, my wrists would, my wrists would cock like this. No, when I bring them up, they would cock like this. They start like this and they'd go like that. And then it really impacted my forearms here. So I haven't been to the gym in a wee while uh, simply because of that. I just spent about 200 bucks on a bunch of physio stuff, like a lifting belt, a bunch of uh, gloves that also kind of have wrist support and also... Elbow compressors as well. So I'll be going to the gym by the end of the week. Ah, maybe next stream you should try and beat Sans. No, I've already tried that. It was actually really boring to watch. Uh, we tried it for about two hours. And the uh, sad part of it was that I was just bored as hell. Like, it, the fight is not... I, it's, it's probably fun to watch. It's probably a fun fight to watch. If it's done well. If it's actually being done well. But not only am I bad at bullet hells, bad at platformers, I hate platforming. I hate, um, uh, I personally hate quick time events and time limits. Uh, what else is there? I'm on a Bluetooth controller, the slowest one possible, highest latency, because I'm using a Sony uh, Bluetooth controller, which only just got functionality on PC this year. Um, so I've got literally every odd stacked against me. And when I was streaming it, we'd get about seven stages in, and then something would just, like, pop up and I'd die. And I did that for two hours, and I realized right at that point that I just wasn't actually enjoying the fight. And to stop it from killing my love for the entire game before I got all of the game theories out, I just stopped fighting him. I just, I've, like, flat out, I don't want to fight him anymore. And I think right at the end of the game theories that I am doing, I'll probably go back to him, and I'll, I'll try and beat him, obviously, but... It's not fun. It's, it's not actually fun to do, in my opinion. It's, it's probably the worst aspect of the game. 
And there are so many things in the game that like prevent you from, like it's artificially inflated to prevent you from actually enjoying doing the fight. Like that long corridor in between every fight is just plain frustrating. That's just annoying. Like I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna stream it, like whatsoever. It's, not, it's just not gonna happen. A permanent abs and core, nice. 200 bucks, yeah, it's, it's quite a bit, but it's 200 New Zealand dollars. So if you live in the US, that'd be around about 140 to 150 US dollars or so. And it's all necessary. Like, I am very depressed not being able to exercise. I was going there six days a week, and my best buddy is now, like, overtaking me in all of the weights. And he started on starting strength as well, so... It's a, it's a little bit of a shame. Uh, since we've got all of these quests done and dusted now, I think maybe we should go and turn them in. I'm gonna go ahead and throw this ruby into the compressor so it can keep on accruing. Boop. Put that in there, I think. Hopefully that's the right one. Good! All right, we're off to the town. In New Zealand? Yeah, yeah, I live in New Zealand. Southern New Zealand, right at the bottom of New Zealand. There's only like three YouTubers down here as well. There's one in Invercargill, and there's two in Dunedin. I'm one of them, and the other one is Epic Flying Horse. He's got about 66,000 subscribers. A lot of people, like, insist that we're from up north, but we are most certainly not from up north. You can actually tell from the accents as well. Usually a southerner will sound maybe less radio voicey, but they'll kind of have the same accent as I do here. Very similar to kind of like how Cape Town and Africa sound, but if the further up north you go in New Zealand, the closer they sound to this, where they kind of like sound like they have a perpetual cold. It's really, <laughs> it's a bit grating on the ears once you start realising that. I think I know who it is. Don't spoil for him, but I definitely know who it is. What, the other, the other YouTuber? If he hasn't been playing Undertale Yellow Genocide? No, not yet. Uh, that's going to be another stream in the very, very near future. That boss literally made my drop my controller and has to go get another one. What, Sans? I, I can't stand Sans, to be quite honest. I'm probably actually just going to cheat so I can see the resolution, so I can actually polish off the game theory. Because I have seen every single aspect of the game that is not beating Sans. Like, every single Easter egg, every single fun value event, every single ending, every single dialogue option with all the NPCs, I've seen everything. We all did it live, and I was kind of, like, talking about the theories that I had live. Uh, so that'll be kind of, like, a major point of the theories that you'll see coming out of the woodwork soon. You reckon you what did this guy want? No, piss off. We'll look for the guys we've already taken the quests of. But, yeah, like, uh... It, Sans is probably my least favorite aspect of the game, and he almost killed my love for the entire game. I'm just not going to fight him. Okay, none of these people are the ones that we actually took the quests off of. I'm pretty sure this is New Glade, the city. That's what it's called. We could always just pull our map out next time we get out of the car. Ah, is that a person that we took a quest from? Let's see. Hello, friendo? Yes, she wants the ring. Here you go, lady. Enjoy. There you go. You will die in seven days. Thanks. I'm well No, thank shocked. you. Okay, 171 buckery booze. Don't mind if I do. We'll take that, obviously. Someone way harder than Sans for Undertale Yellow. You would go crazy. It's very unfair and the objects are hard to dodge. Well, I mean, the thing that annoys me about Sans, right, is that every other boss, you can kind of, like, there's a threshold at which you can get away with just, like, playing the game naturally. But with Sans, especially on a Bluetooth controller, you don't really have an option but to be pixel perfect. And the controller settings for Undertale are so disgustingly poorly designed that pixel perfect just isn't an option. So I am probably going to have to, like, use Cheat Engine or something to beat Sans or something like that. Like you. Right, this is the lady that wanted the sword. She is going to be a major cash cow for us. Here you go, you big cow. Enjoy. She's going to give us a grand for this as well. Thanks. Thank you very much. Well Great. Mr. G Mr. Megorium's wonder wife she is. <laughs> Kind of looks like a man, actually. Strange. All right, walks around like a man. <sighs> I feel like exercising is the way to go. Yeah, it, a lot of people will always say on the internet that you can out diet, no exercise. And usually those people, if you go into the description of these videos, they're full of absolute garbage and they're not worth listening to. It's really easy to tell these people apart as well because if you go into the description of their videos, the first thing listed is, WANNA LOOK LIKE I DO? BUY MY SUPPLEMENTS! THEY'RE THE ONLY ONES THAT'LL WORK FOR YOU! Like, things like that, and then they'll have a bunch of creator links, right? So those people never ever take advice from those wankers because they don't care about your health. They only want to sell you a bunch of crap that they are trying to sell. All they're doing is, is marketing, which is just inherently evil. What you should be doing is trying to outrun a bad diet. If you want to eat a bag of candy uh, every couple of days, I'm 
not going to damn well stop you. But if you go for a run or like you go and lift weights, then you are outputting all of that energy that you're putting into your body. And thus you will not be accruing things like um, heart disease, uh, cholesterol. You, you won't get your veins all constricted and stuff like that. Uh, you'll be relatively strong and healthy. It won't hurt to walk, all of that kind of stuff. So I have a crap diet. I understand that I have a crap, well, probably less crap now than usual because I actually cook now, which is another symptom of going to the gym daily. But when you are going around exercising all of the food that you kind of like put into your body, you can justify putting bad foods into your body even better than you can justify putting good foods into your body and then not moving all day, every day. Simple as that. Oh, how much is Undertale? Uh, yeah, Undertale Yellow is definitely free on Game Jolt. And if you want to play it on a controller like I have right here, you're going to have to add it as a, a non-Steam game to your library, which you can do by going onto your Steam and then just clicking on the, the top right menu that says game. There's an option at the bottom that says add a non-Steam game to your library. Go into the Game Jolt directory, put the EXE on there, then you've got it on Steam. Steam will take the controller... And Steam will say, yes, this is actually a good controller. And you'll be able to use a controller with Undertale Yellow. Because that was the main issue that I had with Undertale Yellow. You can't actually play anything. Uh, we're still also kind of like looking for that one wanker who wanted this ingot. Where is he? Here's his quest list. He definitely lives here. His name is Redwald. Okay. Let's go try and find this. Is that him there? Hi, friendo? I don't suppose you can grab no, he wants a 100 kilo dagger. Actually, that's... Sure, I'll do that. This guy's name is Howard. Howard the Coward. Good to know. We're after Redwald. Don't know where the hell he is. <sighs> I wish that I could reset my memories. Ah, just like, uh, live a better life if you have bad memories. <laughs> I've, got a, I've got a lot of trauma myself, and I've found that the best technique to uh, overcoming trauma is actually to just go and make new memories that you would rather think of, and it just kind of works like that. Oh, so I can remember my, what my first reaction is. That's why so many people wanted to watch me play Undertale Yellow. Honestly, I I feel like I, I'm not going to see anything that I like more than the neutral boss of Undertale Yellow. Flowey was so much fun to fight. I think it was even more fun to fight in Undertale Yellow than he was to fight in the actual base game. Where is this guy? That's not him. That's not him. There is another guy around here who wants this ingot. I, oh, I just ran someone over. Sucks to be him. I'm not seeing it. I'm not seeing it whatsoever. Not that guy either. There's a guy right there. I've just run him over. Oh, no. Okay, he just jumped off of a building. Don't know if I can show that on YouTube. I don't think it was this guy. Did we just go in a circle? Is this the guy or is this not the guy? Hello, friend. What do you want? You could get this for me. Note that is the same guy we went in a circle. Okay, I don't know where the guy is. But it looks like we're not actually going to get what we need. Uh, let's remind ourselves what we need to build this tier 3 store right here. Because we may have the resources to do so now that we have uh, double the machines. Have you ever played Cup yet? No. I, uh, I'm really, really bad at platformers. I avoid them like the plague. Simply because I know that people don't want to watch me be really bad at platformers. That's why I was so upset when I streamed uh, Fighting Sands for three hours. And we didn't even get halfway through the fight. It's because I'm just bad at them. Ah. Have you done Pacifist? No, I have not. And Undertale Yellow. We've only done the neutral route. Arstone Block. Uh, we're going to get that one pretty damn quickly. We know we need 400 Core Stone, 300 Cloudium. Okay. Let's go back home and we'll see if we already have those things. And then we'll see what the Tier 3 store has in store for us. It's a real shame about all of these quests being the kind of like the currency that you need, by the way. It, it, just simply because they're all randomized and while I don't hate it as much as quick time events and time limits, randomization in video games is such a lazy way of doing something. Like, it's not hard. This game centers around having an economy, right? And if you were developing an economy in a video game, why would you not balance the economy for equivalent exchange? It, it doesn't make any sense to me that there is no option for equivalent exchange. Like, if you have completely automated your entire mind to be busting out millions of each or every every few minutes, why would we not have the ability to sell, like, ingots for huge sums of money immediately? I suppose the stock market allows you to do it, but 
At the same time, you have to know where all the stock markets are, and they're not on the map or anything like that. So, again, a little bit of a, a sabotage to the player. This game's kind of weird. It's like, here's a really fun game with a really fun concept, but at the same time, don't you dare try and enjoy it. All right, so we need a 96 weight iron bar that's going to take ages to cut up. How much have we got? 1.8 thousand bucks. That's pretty good. Uh, that's the gold bar. Not interested. This is a dagger. Let's take this with us, actually. All right, and we also need to get ourselves one of those gigantic bricks. I'll leave that right there. Hey, we've got one. Nice. Okay, so that should be the right weight. Perfect. That is the right weight. We'll throw this into the back of the truck, and we'll see if we've got enough core stone and clautium. There we go. Excellent. Woo. I spoiled myself. I don't know why I did such a dumb thing, but I regretted looking it up. Yeah, don't ever look up games. You, you always want to play it organically for the first time, honestly. Uh, all right. How heavy is this? We need 400 kilos of this stuff. We've got 146. That's not even remotely close to what we need. And this stuff, we have 600 kilos of that. That is beautiful. You love to see it. Okay, so we still got to wait for this one to fill up a little bit better. Looks like we're actually getting more core stone than we are Cloutium, which is just strange. I don't know if I like that. Okay, let's go ahead, go over to this brick machine, and we are going to cancel that. We'll just set this to as heavy as we can possibly make it. And we'll add that in there. Great. Awesome! Because we don't want a bunch of bricks to just accrue, especially if they're heavyweight bricks. Now, so we can't make any more of the machinery right now. We still need to wait for the Cloutium, which we still also want to use not for machinery. Probably just go around doing quests, right? I feel like that's just kind of what we need to do. So we need 100 kilos of iron. Let's do that. Let's do 100 kilos of iron. Nice, that is the iron. How heavy is this? This is 8,000 kilograms. All right, so get our saw out. We need 100. 4,000, 2,000, 1,500, 250, 125, uh, 62.5. No, we actually want the 125 one. We want both of these ones here and here. Actually, this should be the, the right way, right? Yeah, 126. Perfect. We'll slap all of these ones into this bucket so we can drop them back into the furnace pretty easily. Great, and these two as well. Done. Let's go ahead, grab this bucket, and we'll drop it in here. There we go. Awesome. And now we need a dagger schematic right there. I'm going to go ahead and cook this ingot. And we should be golden. Where's our blacksmith hammer? There it is. Nice. Is it me or is Asriel way, way easier? Have you played Little Mutt Nightmares? Yes, it's up on the channel as well, my dude. Is the section that I accidentally spoiled? Yeah, I feel like spoilers are probably one of those things people should kind of, like, avoid. I, I have a rule in my life that I will never watch another YouTuber play a game that I intend to play on the channel. Because if I am not enjoying it for the first time, people probably don't want to watch me play it. Which means, when I was playing Undertale the whole way through, I ended up coming up with a very, very organic theory that fits all of the plot of the game... And when I went onto the internet just to make sure that all of the evidence that I had for my theory was all um, airtight and waterproof, which it all was, uh, I found that the story that was commonly accepted by everybody else was actually completely wrong. It's like, it's all factually incorrect. Okay, so that is the dagger. We probably want to go ahead and just get some more quests, honestly. If we can polish off a bunch of these quests, we'll have a lot of this money. And maybe when a, another patch comes out for the game or something like that, maybe they'll add another little element of industry. We can go ahead and breeze through it with all these tokens. All right, good. I should set up my microphone, though, and connect to PC. Yeah, sure. Don't know what good it'll do you on the stream, though. Little Nightmares, my th three comes out in 11 months. It's fun. It, if anybody plays PlayStation, Little Nightmares 2 is actually one of the free games on PlayStation Network. And funnily enough, people don't really seem to <laughs> consider this common knowledge anymore. If you have the PlayStation membership, you go into the free games for the month, you add them to your account... You keep them permanently. They're, they're, they're permanent. You don't only get to play them for the month. You get to play them p forever. They literally give you those free games. That's that, that's kind of how that deal works. So for the last, like, 10 years, I've been going on to the uh, PlayStation Store with the membership that allows me access to the Game Pass as well on PlayStation. And I've been adding all those games to my cart. Now I've found that about two-thirds of all the games on the Game Pass I actually own. <laughs> Simply because I've just been paying for the membership this whole time. 
I'll never show my face on PC. Yep, probably a pretty good idea, if, especially if you're underage, gotta be said. Got to play the demo at PAX West? Nice! Nice! It's not a long game from what I remember, is it? Uh, this guy right here gets his dagger, right? Here you go, buddy. Thank you very much for the tokens. Nice. All right, we've got two grand. We can almost afford one of the tier two machines. Very close. We're about 300 bucks away. We'll go up to the tier three shop and we'll drop off this gigantic three and a half thousand kilo brick into the resource bucket. And then we won't worry about this again. Hey, lady, what do you need? You need to get this for me. Well, this lady is asking for exactly the same thing the last guy wanted. Sure, I'll take it. Uh, that is exactly what we need. Great. Literally to the decimal. Hey, I'm an adult and still prefer not to show my face. Ah, oh, that's fair enough. Personal preference. Different strokes for different folks. Fair enough. Uh, have you heard of the new Astrobot game? Uh, no. Uh, that is a PlayStation thing, isn't it? Astrobot? I used to have a PSVR. I had one for a little bit, but it didn't belong to me. It belonged to my dad, and I had to give it back eventually. Uh, I played a lot of VR games for a month on PlayStation. That was actually the kind of thing that set me off to buying, just outright buying a VR of my own. I got a Meta Quest 2, and my god, it was such a good investment. I think I spent like 700 bucks on the damn thing, though. I got a bunch of aftermarket parts, too. Spent about maybe 200 bucks on aftermarket parts for the Quest 2. And it is so much fun. It's wireless. You can use earplay. Oh, yeah, sure. 84 kilos this this uh oh we don't know how big this is let's see if this is actually heavy enough nope oh, this ain't what I all right fine we'll get another ingot for him done i have played so many vr oh also with the meta quest 2 and 3 you can get something called an airlink cable which is literally a usb c type to usb c type you plug it in you plug the other type into an end into your computer you can use that headset to play steam games as if you had a uh, valve index so it's been about it's just under a grand on that entire gaming setup. And now I can play all of the PC VR games that would have cost me thousands of dollars and I would have had to dedicate an entire room to uh, kind of like getting Valve's base station set up as well. The MetaQuest has all the cameras uh, built into the headset. It's awesome. Love it. I'm 20, almost 21. Oh, that is the worst part of life, got to be said. Oh, she wants a very, very heavy ruby. That's fine. I'll go ahead and get her a very, very heavy ruby. Good. We're getting lots and lots of quests. It's basically just done out of the way. I don't think there was anyone else in here. There's still one guy that maybe he's like in the pit of lava. Do we like knock him into the lava maybe? I'll go check. Maybe he's in the hole. Doesn't look like it. I don't really see anyone. I see one guy up there, but I'm pretty sure he just wants to get a bone. Which we can't really give him because I don't know where the hell we'd find that. <sighs> the seven year long game, which... How much did that took? The other Soul Color games might be coming out from other developers for years. Sorry, what do you mean? What are you guys talking about now? Uh, is this the right way? Yes, this is the right way. We'll go home, we'll polish off these quests, and we will be in a very, very good spot. All right, nice. Does the Undertale fan games look pretty cool? I don't know how many of them I'm going to enjoy, though, because apparently Undertale Yellow is just kind of like... The magnum opus of fan games. There's there's none better. Which I'm pretty happy with. I kind of want to see Undertale Blue, not a real game, where, where you play as the blue soul. Meh. Meh. I basically got all of the information I need for the game theories. The thing about Undertale is not really like... It's not the character you play as, right? That's the interest of the entire game. In fact, the character you play as is probably the biggest afterthought of the entire... Like, you, the player, are an afterthought. Um, especially because um, the fight with Sans just is an absolute pain in the ass. And if they just had some accessibility options that at least, like, disabled the poison or something like that, uh, that would be significantly better to experience as a player. But as a developer, it's, it makes a lot more sense just to have a really, really hard boss for the sake of having a really hard boss because it's easier to program. Okay, we'll start with that 100 kilo gold ingot. How heavy is this? But, uh, in kind of like the grander sense, the thing that you're experiencing in Undertale is really more like the thing that you're not interested in, right? The, all of the events have already happened, and you just kind of, like, get to see the fallout of it. I'm talking about other developers making the other soul colors. Ah, right, okay. Can't wait to see you in, like, five years with over a million subs. 
Maybe. Maybe. Maybe a job would get in the way, but, you know, uh, until then, like, uh, I'm, I'm willing to dump all of my time into YouTube. And Sans is supposed to be the final boss, and if you take away the poison, that he deals one damage. Yeah, but it's kind of like, just a baby mode. Just a, a baby, I don't, I'm not very good at video games mode. Like, I'm pretty sure Wolfenstein literally teases you for playing on the easiest difficulty by showing you a, a difficulty slider. The first icon of the easiest difficulty is the guy that you play as in Wolfenstein, BJ Blazkowicz, who's sucking on a baby's dummy with a, with a bonnet around his head. Like, that is, that's how to make games. All right, 630, we need 100. So, 300, 150, that should be good enough, right? Probably any more and we'll be cutting into our profit margin. Right, let's put all these back into here. And we also need one other thing, don't we? It was a 32 weight ruby. We don't have a chisel, so I'm just gonna give her this gigantic ruby over here. It's gonna be all like, wow, this is way, way heavier than I was hoping for, good sir. We're gonna treat this lady. We gotta treat this lady real good. And we'll put that one right there. Don't think anybody else wanted any, like, items, right? Yeah, 35 weight gold bar. We can't even give that to anybody because they're not there. Weird. Maybe a checkpoint in the fight. Yeah, that, honestly, that alone would make a massive difference. Just a couple of checkpoints. They might as well take some of the items. There are a couple of items that do make the fight easier. I found that the cloudy glasses and the torn notebook, they, they make the Sam's fight a little bit easier by slowing the speed at which you accrue poison. And that is the thing. That's not just a bunch of speculation here, say. It, it does actually make a very noticeable difference. But at the same time, if that is the only accessibility feature in the game to beating Sans, then <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to fight him. I want to see if the blue soul makes it to access and waterfall or not. Actually, there was one thing that I couldn't help but point out a bunch of times across Undertale Yellow, and that's that it had no relationship to Undertale. Like, they didn't have any shared characters, they didn't have any shared zones. Everything was completely different, and everybody in the chat was, like, trying to justify the plot of Undertale Yellow by relating it to Undertale, but there was no relationship whatsoever. Like... <laughs> Hey, if this event happened in Undertale Yellow, then that would have caused this in Undertale. And I'm like, but they're completely different zones. People were telling me that the, um, I think it was the ballet shoes and the tutu was caused by the death of somebody in Undertale Yellow, but that person never went to the waterfall, so why would that have had a relationship in the first place? It was very strange. Very, very strange. This guy wants the 32 kilo emerald. I'm actually going to take it. We have that. And it's just free money. Good. So we'll throw that down there. And we'll continue around here, giving quest items to everybody. Nice. Maybe after, like, the two sweat marks. Or, like, the, um, the, the bits where Sans just gets tired, right? That'd be a good place to stick him. If it slows down, then it's useless because you have to wait longer to heal. What? And no, you continue playing the game while your health degrades from the poison. No, it does, sorry, it doesn't slow the actual karma generation, uh, the, the karma itself, right? So you don't take the same amount of damage and then it slows down that tick over time. It doesn't do that. What it slows down is the amount of uh, the total karma damage that you take in the first place, right? So if you didn't have them on there, the same hit would have been like this big. Uh, sorry, if you had the cloudy glasses and the torn notebook on, then a hit that would have taken off this much health would have taken off that much health instead because the generation would have been slower. The true pacifist standing in yellow is kind of sad. Okay. I, I don't know if I like the true pacifist endings, like, in the first place. This guy wanted the dagger, right? The iron dagger? Yeah, okay. I don't know if we actually made that, did we? Maybe we didn't. Maybe we didn't make that at all. No, I don't think we did. Okay. We'll have to get to her later. Because we didn't craft her dagger. But we can still hand in a couple more of these quests if we actually see them around the place. Here's one of them right there. Hello there, sir. What's good? What do you need? You to make me some a 35 kilo. Oh, piss. Which one's the 35 kilo? Probably this one, right? Okay, let's hope. We don't have any scales. I'm just going to hope that that is the right one. Thanks. I'm well chuffed. Thanks. Good. I'm well chuffed. Okay, thank you for the repeating dialogue, you absolute oaf. Drop that right there. Consolidate all of our money into a single pile. I love it. I love it. So the karma is small on it. You take... Yes. It, it kind of like... It builds up per... I think, like, every X amount of milliseconds that you actually spend inside of his attacks, that's how, how the karma actually... Oh, right here. 
That's how the karma actually generates. And the collided glasses and torn notebook, they slow that ticking speed down. Let's see if we just gave this guy the wrong ingot. Okay, perfect. Excellent. Thank you, sir. We'll take this one. Put that in our pile. And we should be basically gold. Oh, we still got this ruby that we need to give to someone as well. Let's go and find them. Probably going to be around this corner. Realistic. There they are. Hello, ma'am. Are you the ruby lady? No, she wants a tiny amount of gold. Oh, well. I'll do it anyway. What's the harm? Excellent. And keep on going along. Where is this guy? Is that her there? I think that might be her. Hello? Yep, she's the ruby lady. Here you go, lady. A six and a half thousand kilo ruby. Enjoy. Thanks. I'm well chuffed. <laughs> she didn't give us any excess of dialogue. That's a shame. Put that there. Okay. Yeah. Is the building built yet? What? In Hydronia, we have basically filled out the mine with a few more of the machinery items, but we're, we're playing the, ra the waiting game right now, unfortunately, to kind of get the or generation to get the tier 3 shot. We will do it by the end of the session though. That is going to be the hard goal for the session. Can I literally hit you with a bullet? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> it can do. It can do. All right. While we're kind of waiting for the ores to generate, we're doing a bunch of the quests that generate the tokens so that when the tier 3 shop opens, if there's anything decent in there, like maybe a tier 3 machine, we'll be able to buy it with the tokens. It seems like the more quests we do for these NPCs, though, the more valuable that the quests actually get. Because we've got a bunch of new NPCs now, kind of giving us some crap quests. But the NPCs that we are repeating the quests of, they're giving us better and better quests every time that we do it. Sometimes I overthink on what type of person they are or what their personalities are. What, like, uh, an Undertale? I mean, that's kind of like the... The thing that's so cool about the game is that all of the characters have so much pre-established depth that you are kind of, you don't need to already be the person that goes around with them doing their things. They've already been through so much. All right, good. And now we probably want to do a 100 kilo iron dagger, right? That is going to be this one right here. Uh, let's put this on the scale. How heavy is this? 9.6. Right, so it needs to be 100 kilos. 9.6, so... Uh, we need to cut it into essentially a, a, a more round number. What's this? 4.8. Okay, that's way, way easier. 4.8, 2.4, 1.2, 1.2, 300, 150. That should be good enough. Yep, perfect. Great. Love to see it. Love to see it. We'll drop all of these back in the bucket. Oh, that's weird. Those ingots were in sync with the, uh, with the music we're listening to. Okay, we'll drop this into the bucket, not onto the bucket. Bloody idiot-ass hydrogenia. Drop that right there. Great. And now we want to put this bad boy in the furnace. And we want a dagger. Let's see which one it was. Let's see which one of these quests we have to do. This is the one. 94 weight iron dagger. Okay. Just confirming that we're not kind of like misremembering or anything like that. Put that back on the tool rack. Okay, so we need the black smithing hammer. Let's get that off the tool rack right there. We'll grab this, put it right there. We'll grab the smithing hammer and we'll smack it with our hammer, which turns it into a knife every single time. Great. Love it. Ah. Mine is Alphys or Monster Kid. Probably Monster Kid or Jerry. Alphys is at least some depth in her character. Every single character has massive amounts of depth, especially uh, Papyrus. Papyrus is very, very um, trauma-based. You'll see when the um when when the when the game theory comes out. All right, we need some gold. That's gold right there. Let's see if it's the right weight. Three point two four. How heavy do we need it to be? This is. It's a dagger. We've already actually got that one. We can just throw that there. Two point five. Yeah, that's definitely heavy enough. Okay, so if we hand these in, should be absolutely fine. Right? We don't have any other quests around here. No, we don't. I think somebody wanted an emerald as well, right? Who wants the emeralds? Do we have that quest? I don't know. I don't actually know if we... Oh, there it is. What's this? Yeah, 32 weight emerald. We need a chisel to kind of like break down the emerald, but I think we're going to be absolutely fine. There we go. Emeralds. Go ahead and open this up. Grab that. And let's just give her this gigantic emerald. How much heavy is it? How, how well are we treating this lady? 743 kilograms. I'm pretty sure that'll... <laughs> 
<laughs> Put a smile on her face. Nice. The text she gives you, that's got to be annoying. Yeah, I find Elphys to really be uh, just an annoying uh, kind of like attention seeker. But again, Elphys is a symptom of tragedy and trauma. You'll have to wait for the game theory though to see why. Okay, good. I want to come all the way down here. We're going to go back to the city. I think this is basically going to be what we're doing for the next maybe like probably 20 minutes or so before we actually get to the point where we should have enough ores. All right, good. I'm all the way around here. And there is the bubble town. We are going into the bubble town. We should be able to hand in four quests right off rip here. It'd be awesome. Awesome. Here's New Glade. Probably want to go ahead and maybe start taking quests from the other cities as well, because it seems like we are diluting the amount of quests that are here by just kind of like completing them. All right, what does this guy want? Let's see. Let's jackknife our car right beside him to frighten him a little bit. All right, this guy wants that emerald. Here you go, Howard the Coward. Enjoy. <laughs> oh, my arm! Yeah, I'll say. Thanks for the 140 bucks, you cheap bastard. Good God, that was next to nothing. All right, uh, that's one and done. This lady probably also has a quest for us. Hi there, lady. What do you need? Ah, she needs a 94 weight dagger. Good. She was just looming over us to give it to her as well. Grab this. This is about 150 kilos, which is overkill, but... There you go, lady. She's really going to struggle to lift that thing. Thank you. Yeah, we'll put that down there. Yeah, he just takes it. My God, he's he's going to have some real wrist problems in the morning. He'll be just that one lift where he looked at that emerald. That thing was like, what, 700 kilos? Something like that. Poor bastard. He's going to have massive tendonitis. Okay. To make me so much. This guy wants me to make him a dagger. I'm going to do it because it's virtually free money. Take this little quest scroll right here. Hello there, sir. Lovely moustache you have there. Okay, come over here, run that lady over because she has no quest for us. Maybe that's how we lost the uh, the quest giver initially. Maybe it's because we ran him over. Maybe we shouldn't have run that guy over. But we can actually sell a bunch of crap on the stock market here as well. What are they buying? Huge gems. They're buying huge gems. They're buying a lot of jewelry. We'll probably sell our diamond here and we'll get lots and lots of resources for it. Or we can sell half of our iron. We'll still get another 100k for it, I bet. That'll give us another achievement. Not really seeing any of the people that we... There's one. Right there. Hello, lady. Oh. All right, fine. That is virtually free money as well. Let's go ahead and take that. And we'll push onwards. I don't think we saw the other guys, right? Who wanted the little, little gold ingot. And there's also one other thing we had to give away. I don't remember what it was. I think it was just this little golden nugget. Oh well, let's see what resources we have and maybe we could go ahead and make this tier 3 store by now. Ah. Okay, we'll bust all the way through here. A lot of braziers. A lot of braziers around the place. Kind of inconvenient actually because they don't really light up the way. I think they would just put this we crash into something. Alright, good. I'm all the way down here. I still love the volcano in the middle of the map. That is such a cool little landmark. I also love that we can climb it. It's like always a reminder that kind of like where we are living is temporary. You know, because this entire place is going to be like Pompeii when that when that giant mountain exploded. You know, the, when the mountain exploded, there was that Pompeii man, the guy who um, went ahead and tried to snap a nut off <laughs> while the volcano was going off. What a guy. What a guy. What a weird man. All right, good. We're in Scoria Chamber. We could probably do a couple of quests. I'm just going to see what kind of materials we actually have here. Okay. So we need Cloudium, Core Stone. How much of this do we have? We need like 400 of this, I think. We've got 257 of the Cloudium. We need 400 of that crap, I think. We should have enough of the Core Stone. Let's see. Yeah, 851. That's way more than enough. All right. Uh, just got to wait for a little bit more generation. In fact, why don't we just go down south side? Why don't we just start shoveling out some crap, okay? We'll put our bucket right here. And we'll kind of, like, try and stimulate it to keep on going. 
Yes, this works. I like this. Uh huh. Whoop. What the hell? Okay, good. I'm trying to flatten out the ground underneath this bucket as well. Okay. Excellent. Okay, the lava is actually coming out at a pretty good rate. I was going to kind of like dig this out, but I don't really think it's necessary to be quite fair. I don't actually think it's necessary in any way, shape or form. Probably go ahead and give ourselves a tier two pickaxe. So we can start digging into the next layer of the mine, but I'm not entirely sure if that's necessary either. All right, good. Keep on digging all of this out. Good. Might get ourselves a giant weight ingot as well. I'm basically just picking this out while also keeping a few resources. I'm gonna dig heaps and heaps of this crap out. It's actually quite effective. I didn't realize this was gonna be so so effective. Alright, good. Fun going on down here. Nice. Maybe we should kind of like shovel our way all the way to the end. Ah, there's probably not really enough time in this session to actually get into the second layer of this mine, is there? We'll work towards it just in case we ever do come back to this game, but I feel like if we do come back to this game, it'll be because like a patch has come out to add some new elements of industry. And they usually are patching this game out with a, a bunch of free updates to kind of keep players interested in playing, which I actually really, really like that. Have you played Evil Within 1 or 2? No, I have not, believe it or not, but they are on my personal little list on the Discord. I am going to play them on the channel at some point. I feel like they're going to be an edited series, because from memory, i got a best friend. His name's Carl. He has played most of these horror games uh, just out of fun by himself, because he's that kind of person. I've been kind of, like, saving them up my sleeve for YouTube content. Uh, like, I've premeditated becoming a YouTuber for a decade now, and I've been saving all these games. Uh, to kind of like play on YouTube so every time I, I fire up one of those uh, really really good single player horrors I feel a little bit guilty for playing it by myself but that's changed now now that I actually have the YouTube so it is going to come on the channel eventually great I just I do want to make it an edited series because it does look like one of those games where I could definitely meme the crap out of it and it's probably a little bit too spooky <laughs> for one sitting to be quite honest alright good Keep on busting all this down. Oh, the votes are in, by the way. I've, if you guys haven't cast your vote for what you want to see, the content of my channel going forward in the future, there is, in fact, a poll on my channel. Go ahead and go and cast your vote. Basically, I've asked if people want to see more edits, less edits, or uh, more streams, less streams, stuff like that. And it seems like people want more edits. So I'm probably going to be starting more edits on, like, Mondays and Tuesdays instead of just playing a bunch of games. Obviously, for the dedicated days, we'll keep... Uh, like, Wednesday's the retro days. We've got Thursdays that we play Minecraft on. And that's probably not going to change anytime soon. And, of course, the Friday, which will be the voted game. Which will probably actually be a little bit more special if I'm not streaming every single day. To be quite fair. Second one is for streaming. First one is for edit. Okay. Good to know. I, I will definitely do that then. All right, good. Throw all of this down here. Is the second one, like, super long? When my buddy Carl was playing it, he told me that there's just, like, points in it that are super, super long and drawn out. So it might be a good contender for editing anyway, just because of the drought of content that I suspect is kind of, like, at places in the game. If there's no drought, then I'm probably pretty happy just to <coughs> play them in three-hour chunks, but probably not much more than that. Whoopsies. Go ahead and try and grab that snow. We can't grab that snow. It's good to know. I'm shoveling all of this in here. I'm getting a little bit of RSI, but you know, better than actually shoveling these resources myself, right? All right, good. Throw that there. Ah, good. What Minecraft seed is this? Nice. Oh, what? I didn't put that there, did I? I'm certain I didn't put that there. Oh, maybe I put it on that little iron ingot right there. Drop the shovel, please. Put that iron ingot back in the bucket. What is that sitting on? Is there something else in here? It was! Ah, so I gummed up the bucket, essentially, is what we were just looking at. All right, good. Come on, getting all of this stuff yet. I think we do want to go and get a pickaxe, so we can go into a lower level of the mine. Oh, I see. If there's snow in the bucket, so we've got to wait until there's actually lava in the bucket before we place down the snow. Because if a... If an ore falls on it, it doesn't actually snap into the bucket. Like this one here. 
It didn't snap. Right, good. Put that there. Put that there. Put that there. Put that there. Uh, we'll put this on the conveyor belt, I think. Probably actually done quite a bit of res resource harvesting here. But I'm stuck. Boop. Okay, a little bit of frame drop that I am absolutely happy with. Great. Uh, we probably just leave this bucket here as well. To be quite honest. Why would it go anywhere? What the hell? Oh, wait, was that the grinder? I think that may have been the grinder. Was it the grinder? Oh, no! Oh, we've gummed up the grinder! No! Alright, we're gonna have to go up top side. We'll get the magnet on the stick, wherever the hell that is. There it is. And we'll ungum the grinder. Which may make a bit of a mess, but it's better than losing all of these resources. What? Oh my god, seriously? Alright, let's get all of these over here. Oh, okay, so we gotta dump the bucket on this side. Gotcha. I understand now. That shouldn't be there. <laughs> what is that doing there? I'm pretty sure that's a... Yeah, that was a resource. What the hell was it doing sitting there? Weird. So we got to stick it on this platform here, not the other ones here. I checked and both more edits and live streams are at 32%. Oh, I only have so much time in the day though, guys. I only have so much time. All right, we'll keep on mining this out. So it's a tie. Oh, it's gonna be tricky. I was like, I was thinking now that I've had a thousand subs, which it was kind of like one of the reasons I was streaming so frequently. Uh, was to get that last sprint to monetization. Then I could start just dumping my time into the edits. But it also kind of seems like a lot of people are really interested in just hanging out with me while we play some kind of relaxing game. Which is pretty cool, honestly. I, I do actually like that. Uh, like, the whole vibe of the channel is currently at its arc where we just sit on the couch and play a game together. I kind of... I vibe that. You see it a lot on Twitch. You don't see it a lot on YouTube. It's, honestly, I've seen a few live streams on YouTube. You don't even really find people who read chat. <laughs> You can talk to a YouTuber on live stream, uh, but none of them even respond on chat, even if they have like 50 subs or something like that. I usually like to give people a chance before I just like immediately discount them, but it, it kind of feels like YouTube streaming is very, very barren and dry and a bit of an afterthought of the channel as well. You know what the reason I come home from school? Oh, I, I don't know if that's good or bad. Where else would you go? I mean, you can hang out with friends if you want, I don't mind. All of this is going to be uh, recorded, my dude. Ah, oh, but I suppose. I bet you like the lives better than you actually like the edits then, if that's the case, right? I bet that's the case. I bet that's the case. I don't mind, actually. I, like, it's a, it's a strange thing to have people, like, relying on me for kind of, like, stability and consistency, but at the same time, I don't mind it. I don't mind it whatsoever. It's kind of cool. Kind of cool. I'm pretty isolated where I live at the moment because of the uh, the brain damage that I mentioned earlier, the neurogenic fatigue. I don't really get to leave home that much other than to pick Yint set up from work. And while she's going off having her, having her panic attacks because she's mad anxious and uh, she doesn't really like being around people, I am having panic attacks because I am never around people and I, I'm so not used to it anymore. It's so weird to be in a room with a person these days for me. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it makes sense, honestly. It makes a lot of sense. All right. I do do my best to make the uh, the streams as cozy as I possibly can. You're probably going to really like the next game we play, though, because it's got nothing to do with this one right here. This one's kind of jank in its ways. But the next game that I've got lined up for tomorrow, it's super fun. I played it in my spare time a bunch of times. I honestly adore the game. So much so that I bought all of its DLC, which, uh, you know, is probably the first thing I'm going to dive into because it's... Uh, it's the thing that adds automation into the game. All right, good. Drop all of this down here. Excellent. And keep on throwing it down. I thought that when I started streaming, the only attraction to my channel hilariously would just be my voice. Like, I, I know that from personal experience, because I have a streamer that I like to watch named Sips, who's basically uh, my channel, but he's also 50. <laughs> Um, Sips does like six hour live streams every weekday and essentially what he does is he just plays a game that is just really, really long for the sake of being really, really long, like Project Zomboid or any of those simulator games, RimWorld, all of those ones, which are games I actually want to play on the channel. But like, I never watch what he's doing unless I hear something really funny happening, in which case I'll like pay attention for a few minutes and then I'll kind of like go back to whatever I was doing, which is probably editing videos or, you know, making music or something like that. 
But it's like, uh, the attraction to his channel is just background noise. He's got a nice voice. So I figured maybe, maybe it's gonna be me. So if I get millions of subs, that's probably gonna be the reason why, is because of a radio voice. Right, pretty easy. I'm pretty sure that's why boomers uh, put on radio in the background while they're working as well. Just for that. The kind of background noise. Infinite lava glitch? Uh, no, no, we've got a T-junction right here that is just like spewing out lava, and every time we stick a bit of snow in there, the lava melts it and gives us a resource. Which is a little bit different from the, oops, the base game. Uh, with the main difference being that this is significantly easier than the other one, because the base game insists that you get water in a bucket, which you can do this with this little drip feeder here, and then you put some dirt in the bucket, and then you got to drop your shovel, you get a brush out, you brush the dirt into the water, and you get a single resource off of that. So this one right here, this one is so much more lenient. Like, so, so much more lenient. I'm just getting lots of resources. Uh, basically, we're at the point now where we kind of want to see what the tier 3 store is offering, but we don't actually have the ability to see it ourselves. Probably going to have to move this T-junction as well. But we could probably swap sides over there if we want to move over there. Good. Probably go and get a tier 2 shovel as well, which would allow us to get deeper soil, which means bigger resources. That could probably actually be a good idea for right now. Let's go ahead and just see how much it costs. Because I think we've actually got one. And we don't want to stick it on the other conveyor belt. We want to stick this one right here in front of this conveyor belt. Because we already harvested the resources. And I'll drop that there. Nice. Okay, let's watch this go into the buckets. Here we go. Love this so much. <sighs> Have you played Resident Evil? Oh, I've played so many Resident Evils. That's probably one of my favorite series. Well, school time. Bye. Okay, they're facing. Oh, sorry. I must have missed when you um, introduced yourself. That's unfortunate. Never again. That is also a game I played. Oh, I love Resident Evil so much. It, I think Resident Evil 4 is getting a remake at the moment. Um, I played that with a good friend of mine back in high school. And I, we were at that uh, area in kind of like the, the bayou, right? Where you're on those elevated docks and there's a bunch of crocodiles underneath you. And if you fall off the, the docks, the crocodiles eat you, right? My friend and I were playing this in split screen and he fell off of the dock and there was like a crocodile slowly coming towards him and he started screaming. And right before this crocodile went after him, I threw an egg at him and I didn't know that this happened. If you throw an egg at another player, it'll cover their screen in like egg effects so they can't see anything. Very, very funny. I've only seen Resident Evil 7 and 8. Oh, my dude. The first four are... Well, uh, four is getting a remake. I think three is also... In the works? I know 1 and 2 definitely got a really, really good remake. Because the controls were disgusting. They were like tank controls. You know, like, W, move forward, and if you want to turn, you don't look with the mouse. You have to actually hit the uh, A and D, and the only movement you, that you can make is backwards and forwards. Very frustrating. Driving a character like a like a car is, is very, very annoying. Alright, what do we get? Hopefully we've got enough out of this. How much core stone do we got? 355 kilos. That's a <laughs> Wow, we're very close, actually. Okay, maybe a shovel is the right way forward. Let's go over here and see if we've got a shovel schematic in the back of the truck. Because we may do. What's that? That is a grinder. We don't need that ever again, I don't think. Let me just drop that there. Okay, maybe we left them right at the top of the mountain. Let's go ahead. We'll go up the mountain. Or do we? Do we go up the mountain to build a new shovel? That might be tier 1 crap, though. We could wait until we get the tier 3 store, and then we could make a tier 3 shovel, and then just dig all the way down to the bottom of the map. I've played 8. 8 looked really good. I never actually played 8 or... 6. I never played 6. I never played 6. I don't, I don't know what is in Resident Evil 6. I loved 7. 7 was so much fun. That was such a good kind of like breakaway from the from the arcade action that Resident Evil was was getting known for, essentially. It's worth a shot? Yeah, I'll say that. Every single Resident Evil game has been solid in my account. The ones that I have played, even the older ones that didn't get remade, those ones have been completely awesome. Five was so good. Five had a an online multiplayer mode, which was kind of unique at the time where players could invade your game as the super-powered, um, kind of like zombie. And if you killed them, you got a heap of resources, but usually they would kill you, and it was just kind of like a, a little PvP element, right? 
So we're in here. Uh, we want to go and check out the tier two store, which is just behind us. We went a wee bit too far ahead. I was too busy reminiscing in the grand beauty that was Resident Evil 5. That game was awesome. God, I love that one so much. Okay, so. I'll actually make some of these machines, some of these tier two machines. Uh, we could also make a shovel. 540 Cloudium, we're not even remotely close to 540 Cloudium. It only costs a few tokens. How much do these cost? 2.1 thousand tokens. How much we got? We got 2.4. Hey, we can actually afford both of those schematics. Let's do that. This is a good use of our stuff, actually. Uh, is this tier two? That's a crap shovel. They've got really, really bad stats, unfortunately. Oh, do we just flat out buy one? We can't really make one for a long time. We can just buy one. Ah, uh, the schematics are actually significantly cheaper. Let's just do this. It's going to be better in the long run anyway. And we probably also want a drill. Yeah, we definitely want a drill. How much is this? 2.4. Let's also get the schematic for the pickaxe. Excellent. So this is a lot of our money, but it's something that we're probably best to spend it on. So we can snowball our resources into tier two. We'll be in a very, very good place. We're going to need a lot of... Cla Wait. Or is that gold? Oh, I think that's gold. Oh, we've got so much gold. I don't think that's clouding them at all. Nice. Probably actually just stick these side by side and compare them. Or not. That could roll off into a place we can't see it in. Oh, right. It does require gold. Okay, so we can definitely make all of these other things right this second. Let's go ahead. We'll go get some iron and some gold and we'll go and make some tier two items. Tier 2 pick, tier 2 shovel, and then we'll try and recess it down into the cavern, I think. Can you go in debt? Not really, honestly. Um, you start off with a couple of items. You start off in the base game with a tractor, brush band, shovel, bucket, unless you got the world wiping glitch, which I have fixed on my channel for, any, for anybody who is experiencing the world wipe glitch. You know, where you, you start a game, you get really far in it, you go ahead and you load it up the next session, everything has disappeared off of the map, and you're caught in a doom loop. So... Usually you're supposed to start with those things and you're supposed to kind of like brush your way up to being able to afford your first little bit of automation and then kind of everything snowballs from there. Beautiful. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and make a few of these pickaxes and shovels because we've got heaps of resources for it. Hopefully we can get a perfect roll on one of them or maybe both of them. We get three stars on uh, both speed and mine area. That'd be sick. And we should be golden. Because it seems as though every time you go ahead and make an item, they actually have stats now. These are both what we need. I'm going to grab a bucket. Is there one back here? Maybe? No, there's just the one that we're using to fill up the, the car. We'll just grab this one then. Good. And now we'll go up, we'll put all of our ingots in this bucket right here so we don't have to go ahead and make multiple trips because we are going to be here for a little while, I think. And we'll grab this one. That can go in the bucket. Gorgeous. Throw that there. Done. Awesome. Nice. My Lego Star Wars was the Clone Wars game file got corrupted like a month ago. Oh, that sucks so bad. I love Lego Star Wars. When that first came out, I think I played it on DS. It was so fun. It was probably the best DS game that I have played by a fairly long shot. I wanted to love Nintendogs, but unfortunately, you know, the, the voice activation of everything, it didn't work for anybody who wasn't specifically and exclusively American. Because I've got a weird accent, so it just, it just misread everything that I said. I had 99% completed. Oh, that's rough. I think I, uh, with the Lego games, I can beat them in around about 10 to 15 hours these days. Because I, the trick is to immediately go for the cheat bricks that multiply your money so that you can buy more items that magnify your money. Like, it's, it's as simple as that. All right, back up to the mountain. We are going to the top of the gigantic volcano once more, and we're going to start making ourselves a good set of tools. Probably even... No, we definitely can't afford to get ourselves more machinery. But we do have the token for the machinery, so that is going to be something. We've probably got enough machinery up in the, uh, what's it called? The, oh, uh, what is it called? Then the mine at the tier one. We probably don't need any more tier one machinery. It's probably fine. 
We just need to go and get tier two materials because that's where we are going to boom. I use secret codes. Oh, I never use secret codes. <laughs> that's like a shortcut. I, I never use the secret codes simply because it kind of like it robs the game of gameplay. I never understood shortcut kits or anything like that. Like I've seen so many people buy an EA game or, a, or an Ubisoft game, right? And they'll buy all of the DLC at once as well. They'll pre-order the game. They'll they'll do they'll spend all of the money that they can on it, and then they'll review it as a crap game because the um, the shortcuts they only gave them like enough resources to get past just really really basic early game. I don't understand why anybody would pay money to not play a game that they're spending full price on. I I don't understand that in any way, shape, or form. I don't get why people would ever buy a shortcut kit if it's a pay-to-win game. There are alternatives that are not pay to win. There's literally no reason for shortcut kits in, in gaming whatsoever, other than to kind of like enable laziness. Because if you buy a game, right, like say Battlefield, if, you, if you're buying a Battlefield game so you can play it with your friends, the campaign usually doesn't make a single lick of difference if the game has a campaign. Battlefield 2042 did not have a campaign and that's why I will never buy it. But the, uh, the online modes, oh, we just made it onto there, nice. The online modes, if you're buying shortcut kits for cosmetics or shortcut kits just to blast through any of the kind of like early multiplayer, you probably aren't learning the game well enough to be good at the multiplayer. All you're doing is uh, taking your wallet and you're saying, you're skipping a tutorial, essentially. You're skipping the most essential tutorial in a multiplayer game just by buying the early game. Uh, let's grab this bucket right here. I'm going to throw it all the way over here. I just don't get it. I don't get why anybody would ever... Wait, can I not? Can I actually not melt this down? What? But we don't stick Lausium in the, uh, in the tools. Take the piss. Where's that token? That is most definitely gold on the side of here. Oh, right, we need to change the token first. All right, we'll start with the shovel and we're gonna take these and we're just gonna huck them into the lava because we're done with them. Into the lava, please. Bye, bye Excellent. This one as well can go into the lava. Live there. Die there. Go, go. Nice. And now we want the other little token. This is the one we're going to be making first. We probably want to min-max this shovel to get all of the levels that we could possibly get on it. And I don't really know how to tell how to... How we're going to get levels on it. But now we can put this in here, right? Good. Okay, that actually does work. Nice! I kind of crapped myself a little bit there for a second. Alright, let's see what we got. We got a... Shovel. It is... Very simple tier 2. I don't think it... Has any perks or anything on it. Weird. Very weird. Oh well. Okay. So, we'll get this... Into the back of the truck. If it doesn't have perks, then there's probably actually no reason to go ahead and build a bunch of these now, is there? Is that a rake? Yeah, it's a rake. Okay, we probably need that eventually. Uh, let's make a pickaxe next. Drop that on the ground, put that on the podium right here. And we want to move these over here. Put that in there. Excellent. Grab this, put that in here. Done. Nice! Uh, probably want to move this bucket down here. Good. Excellent. Nice! Would you like to hear a Roblox game with lots of lore? Uh, is it doors? <laughs> if you're about to tell me doors, it's already on the list. I actually put that one on the list as well. All right, good. We got a new pickaxe, which actually looks like an ice pick, which is kind of cool. I like the aesthetic for that one. Uh, let's go ahead, grab our ingots, and throw them back into the bucket. A little bit of a shame that we can't kind of, like, actually get ourselves anything with uh, the, the stats on it. Weird. It's called Piggy? I have never heard of Piggy. Is it good? <laughs> Probably, otherwise you wouldn't be talking about it. Okay, we'll come down here. And go all the way around. Yes siree! And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna jump off of this ledge here if I can kind of rail my way up. Please? Please get me up? I was trying to- yeah, here we go. I was trying to drift my way up. Perfect, nice. We want to go... Damn, that's a nice view. God damn, I like this. Okay, there is the entrance to the entire DLC. 
And I think I actually see a little pixel up on the end of those glaciers. But maybe not. We want to go onto this side of all the lava, and then we just want to slam ourselves off of the ledge here. Boing! Excellent. I hit that bounce exactly where we wanted to. We are going down. I'm going to hit this jump as well. Boing! It didn't jump us, unfortunately. I did a little bit of a spin there. I don't know if anybody noticed that. Uh, we are currently burning to death, but that's absolutely fine. Hydroneer does not cook very well. Nice! For the first few chapters? No. What? Like it's not a good game? <laughs> What is this, From Dust? Man, what a crap game that was. I don't know why people have insisted so much that I play From Dust. It was such a bad game. And somebody also told me that it was like, they started to develop it in 2003. There is no information on the internet that says that. It, apparently it was actually developed in the moment. Around about 2010 to 2011, that's when From Dust came out. What an awful game for its time. Like, if it came out in 2003, I'd be all like, oh, yeah. I can kind of see some of the charm of the jank, but now, no. <laughs> There's no charm whatsoever. It's just jank. All right, good. Okay, we're almost back home. We'll take this tier two shovel and we'll start digging downwards, I think. I mean, the first few chapters are a little dull. Oh, really? That sucks. How many chapters are there? If there's four, then... I'm probably going to duck it. I'm probably going to duck that game. Okay, good. I'm all the way over here. We're almost out of fuel for the lava truck, which is absolutely fine. We can always just get some more. But still enjoyable. At least 24 chapters. Are you taking the piss, my dude? Jesus. Why? <laughs> I suppose it was, like, developed by a small team, right? The thing about small development teams is that when you personally handcraft every aspect of a video game much like undertale you start like really thinking about why you are putting things in place you actually start to kind of like curate the entire universe all right where's our shovel we definitely took it right yeah we definitely took it okay that is an elbow huh? Huh? all right move that out of the way i'm gonna move this bloody hand sorter as well can't see anything past it where is it? There it is. It's buried under everything else. Okay, so we'll take this down here. And then we'll start digging downwards, I think. All right, that's fine. Good. That is definitely digging the soil we want to dig. All the way up here, get our bucket again. Where is our bucket? Probably on the back of the truck, right? And we probably also need our pickaxe too. I'll grab this one before we do anything else. Throw it down south side. Throw that there. Uh, these can go up top because they suck. We're done with them. We're done with these pickaxe. Throw this over this way. It's right there, I suppose. Uh, we need the bucket, which has got a couple of ingots in it. We'll go here and take this gold and we'll throw it into the gold pot, which is right there. And right here, this is iron. Done! Alright, let's go south side. We'll start digging out the next area. Gucci! Good, we'll throw that there. Where is the pickaxe? There it is. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and start digging downwards here. And we'll try and go as far down as we possibly can. Then we'll grab the bucket and we'll start digging out around us. Because this is going to be the new area. This is going to be the next, like, section of our mine, I think. All right, we are being hit by the lava, unfortunately, which is, again, absolutely fine. I do not mind whatsoever. All right, good. We're down at bedrock. Excellent. Uh, let's go ahead and kind of, like, mine out a better egress for ourselves here. Damn, this is deep. This is really deep. This is really deep. All right, I'm just going to flatten out this here ground real quickly so we can put a bucket there without feeling too bad about it. Good. All right, nothing there. Get this out of the way so we can actually drop it out of our hand as well. After chapter 12, it gets a little calmer. Wow. That is an insane amount of chapters for any game, let alone a Roblox mod. Uh, we got to unstuck ourselves because we are unfortunately stuck. Now let's go back down there. We'll get our bucket and we'll start shoveling out a bunch of stuff. Hopefully we'll get ourselves a nice little area. I think. Excellent. Whoops. I actually just forgot to uh, grab the shovel and not this pick pickaxe. My bad. Okay, we'll try that again. I'm all the way down here. All right, we're at tier two, which is quite nice. 
We're going to throw that down there. Again, this shovel is useless to us. I'm going to stick it on the conveyor belt. Bye-bye, shovel. Uh, this needs to go all the way down there. Uh, please? I don't have to float above the whole hole, do I? Uh, I did anyway. All right, we'll get this bucket and we'll come all the way down here. Good. What is that for? Right there. Uh, that's not good. That's good. Why is that not filling it? Ah, perfect. All right, uh, put that in there. Damn, that is a big chunk. Why is it taking so long? Why is it taking so long to fill? Is it because it's on like a weird angle or something like that? Maybe. Ah, perfect. Okay, that did the trick. Good. Okay, I like this. I like this a lot. Go ahead and keep on shoveling out. Because we need to make a little bit of a cave system down here, I think. And this is a little bit better than using a pickaxe to get rid of all of the stuff around us. Because we actually do get resources out of this. I think down at this level, we're probably actually getting more effective ore generation than all of our automation as well. So we're probably in a really, really good place. My brain is not braining. Well, I mean, that's its only purpose, unfortunately. You may have to go and see a specialist about that. Uh, let's go ahead and grab all of this stuff right here. Dump it into the bucket. Whoop, whoop, whoop. That was close. Grab this one. Nice. Get this one. Excellent. Okay, wonderful. Awesome. Well, this was actually quite unexpected. I did not think that we would get this far in this session. I didn't think we'd get as far as actually getting to the next layer. I thought that maybe we'd open up the next uh, kind of like progression store and that would literally be the end of it, right? We'd see what there was to offer. Although I've got a sneaky suspicion I know what there was on offer because I took a look at the achievements recently just to see like if there's any low hanging fruit that we could just nail on a stream, which there was um, owning all of the Lots of land was a free, like, 10 achievements straight off the bat. And also throwing money into the well, that was another one. We still need to make 100,000 bucks at the stock market. We could probably just sell our own diamond, our one single diamond. So it's got to be enormous by this point. But yeah, while I was doing that, there was an achievement for kind of, like, putting a bunch of... I think they were called runes? On some of the automation items. Which increases their speed, also increases their output, stuff like that. So I feel like that's going to be what the third tier store sells. It's just going to be like the ability to do attach those onto machines to kind of min-max their efficiency, so to speak. All right, good. Getting rid of all of this stuff right here. Okay. Good. I think that the bucket is just kind of like glitching out. I feel like it is actually filling up with lava every single time we stick something in here. Oh, good. Did that help anything? Yes, that helped lots. Yeah, that helped lots. We're probably going to need a rake down here uh, to kind of like flatten out this land. Is there like something under it? Hard to say. We'll go back topside pretty soon with all of these ores and we'll see if we can't just like use this bucket to get us over this, the, the finish line to get that tier 3 store up and running. Ah, maybe put the conveyor belt where the bucket is? Uh, hmm, that's probably going to take a long time because we have to create a lot of lifts to get a conveyor belt all the way down here. And we can always just hit the unstuck button to kind of like get out of this hole. We don't actually have the conveyor system to get down here just yet either, which is a little bit of a shame. And we're probably also going to want to separate the economies out and put another grinder down here. Another little ore muncher down here as well. We'll recycle the kind of like water system, but we'll set up an entire system down here to kind of accommodate for the second layer of automation. Because we don't really want to choke up that um, big grinder up top side. We saw that get choked up and it really just threw a huge spanner in the works of all of our automation, unfortunately. All right, good. Come on, getting all of this basically done and dusted. Let's see if there's a, like a dinosaur bone here. I don't think there is, but it never actually hurts to check, does it? Okay, can't do that there. What about here? There we go. Any dinosaur bones? I don't see any. No, I don't think so, actually. I don't think there's any dinosaur bones here. So it's a bit bust. These ores are huge, by the way. They are enormous. Look at them. My God. All right, so I'll do this for maybe like a couple more minutes. And then we'll deposit it on the, on the conveyor system. And then we'll see whether or not we've got enough to kind of go and knock off that tier 3 store. And then we'll see what they have to offer before we go and 
maybe potentially take a few more quests. But if the items are massively inflated in value, it's probably going to take us a few hours worth of questing just to kind of like get a few more items. Because the quests don't give us a huge amount of resources every single time. They're very inconsistent. A terrible source of income. That's why I was so upset with the, the agriculture free update. Because it was a great idea. It was a great concept. Agriculture. Oh, come off it. It was a great concept. Good idea to add it to the game. Ag agriculture to the game. But unfortunately, like, its application of not having a decent way of earning the agriculture tokens was probably enough to deter me from wanting to do it at all. You gotta pick up quests around the place to do all the agriculture in this game, and unfortunately, they only give you so many tokens, and they're completely randomized as well, so. More often than not, you get a quest to uh, give somebody some things that you uh, can't actually grow because the seed's too expensive, and you need the coins to grow them in the first place, which you are currently going around trying to actually get, you know, the coins to buy the seeds in the first place, but the quests that are on offer they're not asking for the resources that you already have. They are only asking for the resources that you can't afford, which is a self-perpetuating doom loop. Very annoying. Very annoying indeed. Okay, so we've made a bit of an oubliette down here already. That is a French prison with the kind of like giant well that leads into a, a kind of like a, a giant bowl, I suppose. You put people down there and then you forget about them. It's called an oubliette. It's more of the snow. Excellent. How much is that? Okay, we've probably got enough right here now. After you mine everything out? Yeah, we're probably going to have to. So uh, this big hole right here is actually right beside where the conveyor system goes. But I don't think we're going to be using the conveyor sorting system. We are probably instead going to be using the actual mining sorting system. Until we get a, another sorting system down south side, like this right here is going to be absolutely fine and dandy. So we'll probably want to take this conveyor system and lend this all the way down to where we've just kind of dug out down here. That should be good enough. All right, let's drop this up here. Don't know why I came down here to drop this here. Whoa. They are enormous. Oh my God. We actually need some of this. Okay, we can drop that bucket right there. Kind of want a... Little dash of iron right there for a quest. Great. And we also need a single gold. That's a shard. That is hard stone. That's useless to me. Okay. So, where'd that bucket go? <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. There we go. Got the bucket. Which absolutely destroyed the uh, conveyor si si system. The hell? Oh, we didn't leave this machine on. Oh, that's awkward. Ah. Okay, we need the magnet on the stick. That's fine. When we find it, we'll uh, unclog that jam. And it looks like we've got another couple of little bits and bobs floating around up here. What are they doing? We got a frost rock. Okay, I don't really care about that too much. Yoink! Got the other one. Nice. Done. Where's the magnet? Where is the magnet? Magnet? I don't see a magnet. I don't see anything. Ah, oh, there is a pickaxe. That is not what we want. We want the magnet on a stick. Where the hell did it go? It's not like at the end here, is it? Oh, there's that shovel that we threw out. Go throw that on the ground. Magnet? Magnet? Maybe it's downstairs. Where is downstairs? Maybe I am, in fact, the stupid dunce. In the cave? Yeah, it's got to be, right? It's not up top. There it is. Good. Okay, because we had a blocker earlier, didn't we? All right, let's go ahead and try and unclog this in the most, in the least invasive way possible. Oh my God, that actually worked. I can't believe how well that worked. Sweet mother of God. Done. Okay, there's only one emerald that didn't go into the machine. It is right here. I'm going to drop it in manually. There we go. Perfect. Awesome. That was also satisfying to watch. What is this? Iron ore? Great. So that is one of our little quests that's kind of polished off. Somebody wanted a really heavy ore of iron. So there we go, done. What is this? This is 2.5 white gold ore. We've also got that over here, I'm pretty sure. What is this? Like three point something, right? Yeah, 3.24. Whoops, didn't mean to leave that there. Wanted to keep this right there. Done. Okay. So we should have just tipped over the, th the very precipice of the core stone required, right? Got 1.18 1 
sorry, 1.18 thousand kilograms of this, and that is 600 kilograms. That should be enough, actually. Right, good, because we need 400 of one, 300 of the other. Let's go down to find our bucket. Where the hell was that bucket? Didn't we get it off of the conveyor belt? I'm certain we did. There it is. It's right where we would have left it. Uh, we want to stick our ingots in here, and we'll see what the tier 3 store actually does have to offer. This is brand new territory for us, by the way. There's no documentation for this game whatsoever, so we have to figure all of this out on our own. Ah. What's your least favorite Undertale character? Mine is Alphys. Yeah, it's got to be Alphys, right? Alphys is really annoying. <laughs> so it's just as simple as that. There are parts of the game that you actually could feasibly enjoy without Alphys texting you, but Alphys insists on texting you, so... Kind of ruins the, uh, the the experience of the hotlands for me. All right, good. Especially since there's like two or three puzzles that you could reasonably figure out for yourself if Alphys just wasn't there. And it would be more fun to have figured out for themselves, for yourself, than actually allowing Alphys to just say, oh, sorry, I'll just bypass this really easy, but like it's condescending as hell. Alphys is condescending. That's why I don't like her. Genocide is better without Alphys? Yeah, it is, isn't it? It's much nicer. Okay, we'll come over here. We are going into Bubble Town. New Glade, apparently it's called. And we're going to drop all of these ingots into the Tier 3 store just to our immediate left in here. We are virtually done with the Tier 2 store, I think, because we've got everything that we wanted out of it. And here we are. Brand new territory for the entire internet, because apparently I'm the only person in the world that bothered to buy this DLC. Here we go. Drop that there. Very cash money. And we've got it, don't we? Boom! Nice. I love how that explodes. Okay, good. Put that there. Put that there. Let's see what we've got now. This is... Oh, actually, we, we can buy this now. Okay, advanced ice shovel. That is crap. You see the skulls next to it, right? So that means it's got a bunch of debuffs against it. And I thought that you get these item buffs and debuffs by, like, constantly getting the... Um, smelter at the top of the volcano to roll them, but apparently that's not the case at all. Make these right now as well. Ooh! Yes, and it's been forever. I'm in an emergency right now, so I have to say bye as soon as I say hi, but hi, I'll try and catch you next stream. School has made me miss your strings, damn it. It's better to get an education. It's better to get an education, Teardrop. And all of the videos, they're gonna be there, so don't worry about it too much. Bucket plus DLC? Yep. Indeed, indeed. We could probably actually make... Uh, we should probably buy them, I suppose. How much money do we have? We should have enough for these. 397, so we can buy one of these little schematics now. I think it's probably gonna have to be the shovel. Oh no, we definitely can't buy any of them. What the hell is this? A Thor booster. Increases the tier of depth a lava Thor can operate in. Attach to the rear of a vehicle. Don't know what the hell that means. Oh, there's a, a decent lava drill here as well that we could probably actually set up immediately too. Is that all? It's just a couple of Really? Is that literally it? There's a nuke here. We're not going to use it. All right. Just materials, it seems. Okay, let's grab this bucket. We'll go do a couple of quests and we'll fill out the uh, money. We'll fill out our stock. How much do we need? How much do we need? Go ahead and do some math. 430 plus 480. So that is 1,010 plus another 480. That is 1,470. No, 90. 1,490. So, 1,500 bucks. We need 1,500 buckery boots to get ourselves the next tier of equipment. And probably we could just, like, flat out skip having to mine the second tier if we just skip straight to the third. Because I'm pretty sure that the drills work at every tier depth anyway. Which means we can move all of our drills down. Hello, the friend. Alright, this guy wants a 43 kilo iron, uh, golden ingot. We don't have one of those, unfortunately. We do have the nugget, though. Someone asked us for a nugget. We can give them the nugget. Ooh. Who needs to buy anything? Yeah, exactly. Hello, Yinsen. Hey there, Spray Paints. How you doing? Come up here. Okay, this is just core stone, but it is... Sorry, Clausium. It is kind of expensive, so we are going to do that, I think. Uh, we didn't take anything to sell at the stock market, either. This guy has something for us. What do you want? Whoa! He's given us almost two grand's worth of stuff. We already have all of those materials as well, so we'll definitely take this one. I'll put it over there so we know how lucrative that one is. Okay, good. I still don't see any of the other people we've already accepted the quests off, though. 
Is that one of them? Hello there, sir. Yep, 2.5 a kilo golden ingot. Here you go, you big bastard. Enjoy. So we do that one quest for that guy with the sword. We get all of the tokens required to get the tier three tools. And then we'll go all the way to the bottom of the mine if we have time. Good, so that's one. Where's the other guy who wanted a nugget? Is this the other guy that wanted the nugget? Hello, sir. Do you want a nugget? No, she just wants some uh, some Claudium nuggets. Bit of a shame. All right, we've lost that guy that wanted the nuggets. So let's just go ahead and not exit out this way because this is the wrong way. We'll go this way. No, this is the right way because the T2 store is right there. My bad. Just got back from martial arts. I've not been able to get an efficient source of transportation for weeks. I'm so rusty, but doing good. That's awesome to hear. What are you studying? I love that so much. It's, it's really cool to see somebody like... I imagine you're starting your martial arts journey because I've been doing it for so long that like I'm a little desensitized to the actual martial arts of it but I love seeing people just getting into it for the first time like the first time I've seen a child hip throw a grown-ass adult over themselves and into a wall or into a pad or something like that which you usually see at judo first time you see a child doing that they get this magic in their eyes and they realize oh my god I have the tool that runs the world at my fingertips right now it's so cool to see Unfortunately, like, a, a few months after people start learning martial arts, they get a big head and they, they start they're thinking that they can pick better fights than they can, but I'm really a starter. Like, really, really? Barely know anything? That's a great attitude. Keep that attitude. I've had two decades worth of martial arts experience, and I have um, self-taught half of it. The other half I've learned from a bunch of people that, you know, actually did the martial arts. I assure you, it is best to stay the student for the rest of your life than it is to assume that you're a master. Oh. Truck just ran out of uh, lava, so we can go ahead and dump this here lava bucket right into the back. It's even bubbling. We did make it home somehow, though, which is pretty crazy. Okay, done. That should fix the issue. I think maybe we should have, like, a refueling station. Might be a really good idea, perhaps. I th yeah, I think we're actually going to do that. We should probably pipe up some, some lava from, like, right down here. And then create a little area where we can just drive the truck under it so we don't have to bucket in... All of that crap. But that's a long-term solution. Undying suplex a rock just because she can? Nice. You can't overhype yourself for nothing? No, you can't. You, you definitely can't. And the irony of martial arts, a lot of people don't seem to kind of like get this, is that the more martial arts you know, the less martial arts you can actually use in life. Like, I could probably pretty easily kill somebody with a few strikes, but if I do do that, then you get into the manslaughter charges and you get your body registered as a as a, a deadly or a lethal weapon, depending on where you live. That can happen. It could also not happen. But you will face charges if you, like... If, if somebody comes after you with a knife and they're all like, give me your wallet, and you stick the knife into the side of their head on reflex, that's bad legally. That's really bad. Like, you, you cannot use martial arts in that way. You can only really use it to defend yourself. When I was learning uh, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu with a couple of guys, I used to go to a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu club. I hate Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, by the way. Uh, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, in my eyes, is basically like all of the fun stuff of Japanese Jiu-Jitsu just taken out of the sport. I don't really like the tournament styles. I like the traditional martial arts, which have the purpose of, you know, being martial arts and not just a fun sport to watch. But when I was kind of like rolling around with the other guys, I kind of realized that the objective of self-defense... In my eyes is to defend yourself right so when we would kind of like grab each other and go to ground i'd like uh, give someone a side throw or something like that use their shoulder get them on the ground and then i just walk away and they're all like what the hell are you doing and i'm like i've won <laughs> it's as simple as that i'm i'm leaving now i've defended myself i don't need the rest of the information <laughs> i don't need to know about a bunch of fancy locks unless i'm literally going to be locked in a cage with another person who knows all of these locks or as well, right? And uh, I am also being watched by several people who are making sure I'm not doing anything too dangerous. That is essentially Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu in a nutshell. And it's impressive that some people can, like, um, do so many cool things with their bodies. But at the same time, I'm not interested in that kind of style of martial art whatsoever. I'm more interested in traditional stuff. I've been getting into Wing Chun recently and a little bit of Wushu. I quite like Wushu. Because uh, it's easy. It's really easy to do. And anyone can do it at any age, realistically. Alright, so we need basically two 100 weight core stone ingots. And we also need 17 clautium for this here sword. We'll put that on sword mode. 
So this is the core stone. We should have more than enough for this, by the way. Okay, we've already got 800 kilos. We needed 100 per, right? Okay, good. 800, 400, 200, and we've got two 100s. Great. So probably should just weigh them regardless. Okay, I'm going to weigh them regardless. Get rid of this. Uh, I'll drop this back into the pot, I suppose. And this one as well can go back into the pot. Done. Nice. And that is 200 kilos between them. Excellent. Love that. Love that. We'll cook both of these. Now we need like 20, I think, of the Cloudium, which we should have just in the van right here. Where's our ingot? Do we actually gr grab our ingot? Maybe it's still in the bucket. Oh, I think I may have dumped it already. Okay. How much have we got? Uh, 277? Okay. Uh, so, 260, 13, 650, uh, 325, uh, 160 or so, 8, 80, 40, 20. Uh, 20 should be enough, right? All right. I'm just doing math on the fly here. I'm just going to throw all of my ingots in here. Good. Throw all of that in there. Wow. Positioning the bucket in advance actually makes it so much easier. So this should be 20, right? Perf no, that's two. Oh, I may have forgotten to carry a one. <laughs> Maybe I didn't carry the one at all. Uh, that's 10. Okay. Maybe we need one of the bigger ones, unfortunately. How many big ones do we have? This one should be a, right. That's 25. 17. All right, let's drop this one and the other bar into the furnace right here. And then we'll see what we get out of that. We'll just top it up. There we go. That is huge. How heavy is this? 42. Actually, if we cut this one in half, we're fine. Done. That is definitely 20. We'll leave this in there. Now we want to go ahead and throw all of these into the bucket. Because we want to stick them back in the pot. And this is going to give us enough money to get all of the items that we need from the tier 3 store. Oh, piss off. <laughs> yeah, sure, just dump them all over the floor like an absolute oaf. Good God, caveman. Wow. All right, good. So that should be done, dusted. The middle one was supposed to be this little one here. The middle is little. Good to know. Let's go ahead and look at this. Yep, middle is little. So let's go ahead, grab this one. We'll stick it here. Grab this one. We'll stick it here. And this one, we'll stick that here. Grab our blacksmith hammer. Boom. Nice. And this is money. Basically completely automated. Great. Okay, we're going back into town now. Obviously, I'm going to stick my tools back on this rack right here. I am not a Philistine. Right, and we're probably going to want to fill up our car on the way back as well. <sighs> I can't get Asgore's battle theme out of my head. Uh, you'll have to listen to it then. The only way really of getting a song that's stuck in your head out of your head is to listen to it, I found. I get Vengabus stuck in my head frequently. I do not want it. Also, on a side note, if anybody hasn't had their daily dose of cringe, go ahead, go onto the internet and look up the Vengabus music video because it is so dated. It is bad. I think it was even bad for the time it came out. Like, really bad. Very cringe, the whole thing. Okay, we need to get ourselves to a little point of lava so that we can refuel our truck, which there are going to be plenty of opportunities for right next to Bubble City, which is right on the horizon right there. Nice. Okay, so we'll come through here. This guy's not going to know what hit him. He's going to be all like, oh, damn, you actually did make that sword. I didn't even think you could you could do such a thing. Doesn't make sense. Physically, it doesn't make sense to make a, a sword out of such expensive resources. Uh, we want the bucket. We don't want the sword. I was about to grab the sword. All right, grab that and come up this way. Or we could just, like, bump on everything, which is not good. Whoops. Drop that there. Excellent. Uh, we'll take this and we will jump up the front because the front seems to be the most reliable way up to the fueling platform. Great. And we'll drop this back into the lava. Nice. I wonder how long we've actually spent just refueling this truck alone. Okay, there we go. It's full. You can tell because the uh, texture right there is all completely off. Nice. We'll grab this here spear bucket in case we run out again. And we'll just jump into the bag. Done. Now let's go sell the sword. Excellent. Okay, where was he? That's going to be the next major question. Was Tim here? I don't think this was him. Give me this. 
No, this guy just wants some gold. I don't care about you, sir. I don't care about you and your pittance of money. Yuck. What about you? Did you want the sword? What have you got? No, she wants gold as well. Good God, people. Okay, we'll get into the truck right here. And now we look. We look even harder. Nope, no one around here. Uh, maybe him. There's also a jeweler here. We could probably make the jeweler too. Hello, friend. Nope, 42 kilo uh, dagger. Not interested. What do we need for the jeweler, actually? What do we need? Hard stone. Yep, 40 hardstone and 50 iron bar. We can do that, actually. That's really, really easy. That's the last building we've got to go in this um, in this city, too. Hello, lady. I don't suppose nope, she wants the core stone. Where was the guy with the sword? Was it him? It was a guy with a big beard. Was it him? It was him. Nice. Good. Okay. I thought maybe he'd uh, gone home or something like that. Here you go, buddy. What do you think? Thanks. Yeah, I thanks for the, gr for, the, for the two grand. Excellent. Now we've got 2.2 thousand buckery booze. We can go and get the little tokens now to get ourselves tier three gear, which will massively inflate our income. If we can go all the way to the bottom of the mine and then set up a couple of conveyor belts, we've basically done and dusted this whole DLC. Okay, so that's 430 bucks. Let's just price all of this up first. I want this, obviously. And I want this here token for a masterwork pick. And I want this here shovel. Okay. We've got twice as much as we actually need for this. I think those tokens actually also cost us about the same for the tier 2 stuff. Maybe you just want to skip them entirely. Uh, there's no use crying over spilt milk. We'll get this. I'm going to back this truck in. Simply because I don't want anything to roll off the end here. Good, because I know that these machines have a propensity to fall off the back of the cars. Which is quite famously where thieves get all of their stock from. I will drop that there. I don't want any thieves to get my things. Grab this token here. Uh -huh. Put that put that there if I can. There we go. And one more. Nice! Was there a tier 3 rake as well? No. <laughs> that would make no sense. We could probably actually just get this rake. This advanced ice rake. I'm going to do that. We've got this rake back here. Since we've got spare money, I'm just going to drop this here. And maybe we go scrap it. Maybe we don't. Who cares? I'm going to buy this rake. Just because it's the most bougie. Good. I was the first to watch. Thank goodness you're here. Were you actually? Because I bet there are a few people in chat who were actually there on the streams at the time. Okay, good. So all of this out here. What do you think of the thumbnail? Did, if you finished uh, the, the video, did you like the thumbnail? I don't, I really don't know how I got away with that, to be honest. I think at some point, someone from YouTube's going to be all like, yo, you can't, <laughs> you can't put this there. <laughs> all right, let's go and look for a scrapper. Even if I have to run around in circles to find it, we will probably find a scrap heap around here. Yes. <laughs> I think it was gross. <laughs> it was a gross thumbnail. Okay, we'll come all the way this way. I still don't really see any scrappers bit of a shame maybe there are no scrappers in the city maybe they're kind of like at that other place where we get all the logic stuff from i might be right on that one actually oh it was perfect <laughs> it's like one of those if you know you know moments right is that a script no it's just the side of a building nothing over there uh hey there lady i don't suppose you could grab me this hey uh, here you take that enjoy it <laughs> <laughs> She's cussing us out while we run away. <laughs> Hold this for a sec. I don't think they're coming back. You reckon you could get this for me? Yeah, there's no scrapyard here. Okay. Well, we did just get all of the kind of like the perfect tier three stuff. So we're gonna go ahead and just get all of that processed. I think we go back to our little townhouse now, if you could call it that. It's more of a cave in the ground. We probably want to get all of the conveyor systems about as deep as is humanly possible right we want to set up all of the all of the machinery as deep into the mine as we can and we'll move all of the lava stuff down there as well that's probably going to be the best option don't know if we're going to get it done in like 20 minutes but i'll try it anyway okay i'm all the way up here we'll go back home i think the next best move for us is probably actually just going to be to 
craft ourselves these tier three items rather than moving the entire mine down a billion steps, right? Because quite frankly, there's no need for it. There is literally no need for it. Okay, I think the scrapper is also just a hop, skip, and a jump over the river that way as well. Good. Now that we got all of that out of the way, I'm going to plug in this other machine if I can. Only if I can. If I can't plug it in, then obviously I'm not going <laughs> to plug it in. Uh, we also need lots and lots of lava pipes, so even buying that is going to be time consuming. We've got more than enough money to do so. I'm just going to plug this in. It's got a decent output size bonus. So, now that we have what is essentially a self-sustaining economy here, we want to dig all the way down there now, right? We'll see. I'll kind of like crouch into a corner and see if I can't maybe see into the into the ground to see where the pocket of lava is. I think it's actually right down there. I'd say, actually. Go and get ourselves a pickaxe. Ah, oh, this one will do, actually. Uh, let's crouch down. And, yep, that is definitely it down there. Uh, we'll keep on going down here. Yep, that is a gigantic pit of lava, actually. There is the tier two pit of lava. We want to go all the way down there, don't we? Probably just mine out a little cave system that goes down there. Uh, what am I doing? I should probably actually be investing resources to make this pickaxe significantly larger. Okay, maybe we do that. Maybe we do that. We're going to go up to the mountain. We're going to make ourselves a new set of tools. Let's do that. We're done with this here pickaxe. Let's just drop it with the other yucky pickaxe. And we want to see what it requires. 370... Okay, 370 core stone for both of them. We have that. And 120 clautium for both of them. We have that. So that's 740 core stone, which I'm pretty sure we have. 740 core stone. Boop. 740 core stone. Oh, so goddamn close, actually. So, so close. And the other one needs to be 100, 240 of this clautium here. So that we should have enough clautium, honestly. We have more than enough clausium. No, we don't. We, we don't actually have enough for either of these. Maybe we get a shovel. I wasn't able to get far into the video because of the stream. That makes sense. I kind of like that uh, YouTube saves how long you've been watching in a video, though. I do really like that little detail right there. All right, we'll put that in there. We'll let that accrue a little bit better. We'll use all of these yucky tools to go down into the tier three stuff then. Maybe we'll start getting a tier 3 shovel eventually. But it's not really too imperative at this point, right? Alright, good. Keep on coming all the way down here. Pretty sure we are going straight down into the lava pits as well, which is just fantastic. That's exactly where we want to be. But we're going to need to chop and change a lot of our sorting system as well, to be quite honest. Ah, we can't go that far deep. So we actually do need a tier 3 pickaxe anyway. We're a little bit stuck. Go ahead and unstuck. We probably have enough to get at least a pickaxe to start mining down into there. We won't have enough for the shovel yet. All right, let's actually just pour these out. We'll put them in the bucket and we'll go and make at least the shovel, I think. Probably going to be a good idea. No, not the shovel, the pickaxe. We want to make the pickaxe so we can actually get down to that depth in the first place. And then we'll set up the automation down there. All right, great. What else we got? Anything else here? We've got this yucky token right here that we're probably not going to use. We'll throw it into the into the volcano, I think. All right, let's go up to the mountain because we deserve to do so. We didn't get any tier three machinery. Maybe the machinery is all kind of like very consistent in what it does. And we don't need to replace the machinery with uh, better tiers. Maybe we just need better tiers of dirt. That'd be awesome, actually. Ah. Can you play more Undertale Yellow routes? Because I missed your first Undertale Yellow stream. Absolutely. Uh, we're going to be doing every single route. We're going to be doing the Pacifist, uh, True Pacifist, and of course Genocide as well. But those are all going to be essentially in single settings. I have kind of got Undertale Yellow up on the channel. They're just privated videos. I haven't made any thumbnails for them yet. So uh, they're going to stay private until I basically got that. And I've chopped them all down into like two hour chunks. That is really nice and easy to watch. What day? Couldn't tell you. I haven't got it planned just yet. Want to make sure that I won't miss anything? Uh, how about I let everybody know in, like a day in advance on the YouTube community? Are you, are you Do you get the YouTube community notifications? That'd be a pretty good way to figure it out. Because I 
I have been kind of like communicating, probably over communicating what's going on in my channel in the YouTube community page, which I think people probably more appreciate than are pissed off with. I've also kind of like stopped giving people notifications for all the long play streams that just like aren't huge ones. Like these ones, like Hydrania. Like I, uh, notifications are disabled for this series in particular, Supermarket Simulator also. Dragon's Dogma as well, I disabled those ones. Just so that people aren't spammed with notifications. And you only really get the important stuff, right? I do get those notifications? Excellent. All right, so I'll, I'll let everybody know a, a day or two in advance, right? Maybe on like a Monday I'll decide to do it on a Wednesday or something like that. But I haven't got it planned yet. I, I am not planning it just yet. I am kind of like... I'm doing things behind the scenes at the moment. I gotta like do a billion thumbnails because I got such a backlog of, of VODs to go up onto the channel that I have like partially edited at least. All right, we'll go right here because this is the path through the volcano. I'm also working on a 1000 subscriber special, but I uh, was a little bit ambitious with my talent in animation. So it's kind of tricky. <laughs> like it's, it's really, really tricky to actually get what I want kind of articulated in video format. Edit stream. I have to wait like two hours after school until you start streaming. Oh, no. So I can't do an edit stream, unfortunately, because my uh, development suite, DaVinci Resolve, takes up my basically all of my graphics card, which is a 40... C Actually, I looked it up. It was a 4060 Ti, which is a... It's a powerhouse graphics card. One of the newer uh, 40 series, which are just insanely potent at what they do. But... DaVinci Resolve, the editing suite that I use, it takes up all of my graphics cards. So when I try and like stream while I have DaVinci Resolve up and running, everything just stutters and crashes. You only get like two frames a second and stuff like that. So I wanted to do a lot of the development uh, on my channel on stream, but I, I can't actually do it, unfortunately, because there's a limitation with just the world's technology. I could probably get another computer and then get a capture card so that we can kind of like run... The stream through one computer and then the editing through another one. But until I'm, like, made of money, it's going to be hard. Can you control your double vision? I have absolutely no idea what that means. I have 12-20 uh, vision. I've literally got the same eyes that an eagle has. I can see mice moving around in a field beneath me while I move at a high speed. All right, we got two of these little tokens here. We can throw this one out now because we are done with this machine entirely. Throw that down there into the pit of rejects. And this one as well. I'm going to throw that into the pit of rejects because we don't want that tool anymore. It's a yucky tier. We'll obviously keep the ones that we've got so we can kind of like do what we're doing. But we're not really limited by machinery to the tiers of soil anymore. So we, it's probably not relevant whatsoever. All right, let's go ahead and jam that there. We'll make this pickaxe. We'll haul us back. Right here. All right, because sometimes I can just do it when I'm bored and have something to look at. Yeah, I've wanted to for a long time. I'm actually really, really good at editing as well. Um, my buddy, Epic Flying Horse, he's got 67, 66,000 subscribers, round about there. Makes Skate 3 videos. He's been doing it for around about a decade or so, maybe even longer than that. And he used apparently the same suite that I started on, which was Sony Vegas. And we both kind of moved on to DaVinci Resolve at the same time. He picked up the real basics of DaVinci Resolve super fast. I did not. It took me months and months to kind of get the hang of all of the stuff. So I think he had a, a better grasp on it initially, but I've massively overtaken him in kind of like the other things that are required in editing, like um, animation. If you see an animation in a video, that takes me like five minutes at most just to animate. So I could sit here and I could like for a living animate videos for a living, but I don't want to. I'm also not very good with pens, so I kind of have to have a, a base resource to play with. So I kind of preferred, like, editing actions on real-life videos that just are funny memes rather than animating actual videos. I'm not much of a, um, not much of an artist. I'm, I'm definitely more of a performer. But I have gotten so good at the fusion and color tabs and also fear light of DaVinci Resolve that uh, I, I can blast out. A half an hour edited video in about two, maybe three hours if it's really, really good. Is DaVinci Resolve good for beginners? No! <laughs> no, it's not! Uh, gotta be said, there are better editing suites like... Adobe After Effects is pretty beginner-friendly. DaVinci Resolve has about 
the thing that I love so much about DaVinci Resolve is that black magic design, the people who make it, have so much love for online video editing communities that they have started pouring money and resources into documentation to allow people to learn how to use their suite so much easier than any other suite on the market today. Today. When I was using DaVinci Resolve, when I started using that, it was DaVinci Resolve version 17. And the documentation was eh. Over the last, like, year, they have flourished in the video editing community. They started putting out a bunch of 16K capable cameras. You can now shoot a full movie with just Blackmagic design items. You can edit and animate a Marvel cinematic movie with just Blackmagic design items and um, softwares. And the actual DaVinci Resolve, while it's free, which is a huge plus as well, because usually editing suites are a few hundred dollars, um, while it's free to use, it's a compilation of a bunch of different suites, including Fearlight, which is, in my opinion, the best audio, audio editing suite that I have used, short of Reaper. Uh, there is Fusion, which is a fully integrated node-based editing system, which, once you get the hang of the nodes, it's so much easier than it looks. Um, what else is there? The edit tab is super fast for just making cuts, and the actual, like, exporting page is very thorough as well. There's no way you can cock up that. But it's not necessarily good for beginners. If you want to begin on DaVinci Resolve, there is no better suite to learn than DaVinci Resolve, because it seems like they're kind of beginning to corner the market that Adobe used to corner. But Adobe has such ridiculously high prices that they are now inaccessible to people who aren't doing it for companies. So Blackmagic Design, they are becoming kings of all of the editing suites. And if you want to get the, the like full DaVinci Resolve suite, that's going to be a one-off cost of 600 bucks, which at the same time, again is still cheaper than the subscription-based systems that Adobe is charging for all of their suites, which over time will end up to be more than the uh, single one-off cost of buying the entire pro version of DaVinci Resolve. Everything that I yeah, you see on my channel, though, that is in the free version of DaVinci Resolve. I haven't bought the, um, the paid version yet, and I'm probably not going to until I start like getting a few people together and we start kind of um, comparing notes and maybe thinking about making films which is a way long-term in the channel, but I really like the idea of filmmaking anyway, and I want to run a publishing company. So that is going to be basically a goal of mine, is to kind of like get some black magic design gear and then start shooting a couple of like live action films or something like that. I got some, I got some real good ideas in the works. I got, I got some short stories that I wrote and some of them would make really, really good like uh, visual skits and stuff like that. But again, I'm gonna need to think about this way off in the future. But okay, so, Epic Flying Horse and I, we both used uh, Sony Vegas Pro initially, which is Sony's kind of, um, it's a damp fart, essentially. It's a kick in the face of anybody who's ever actually used a professional editing suite once you use a professional editing suite. It's really annoying when you realize that it chokes your entire CPU and doesn't use your graphics card to render anything. So all of the editing that you're doing is fully loaded onto the CPU, which is already being overloaded with kind of like background tasks, your operating system, and everything that your computer just requires as a baseline to run. So it's taking the least efficient method and it is kind of crippling itself by insisting on using that. So I would never recommend Sony Vegas Pro to anybody unless they really, really, really do not want to use DaVinci Resolve for some crack smoking reason. And they've only got 40 bucks to buy a design suite. Because that's how much it costs. It only costs 40 bucks. But even then, there are better free ones as well. The last stream was horribly good. Oh, you're a sweetheart there. You're a street you're a sweetheart, Liam the Destroyer. I mean, you say that the game that we were playing was pretty ass though, was <laughs> it's a ridiculously bad game. From Dust, gotta be said, it's probably gonna be a hot take as well, because a lot of people probably remember From Dust better than it actually is. Because they played it when it came out and there were no other god sims or, or physics sandboxes or anything like that when it first came out. That were good, I would say. So maybe people have uh, rose-tinted goggles on when it comes to this game, but I think it sucked. as a it Just as a, as a core experience, it was a, it was a bad experience. It barely functioned. The controls were ass at all times. Um, the game didn't explain why that you kept dying, um, especially when the game would bug out and kill you for... Apparently no reason, like lighting your village on fire when there's no lava around it or anything like that. It just makes no sense. Stuff like that. It might have been good for its time. Oh, it, it would certainly have been good for what time I was told it came out in initially, which was 2003. 
But that was actually a gigantic lie. It did not come out in 2003. It came out in 2011. So for its time, it was a crap game. It was such a bad game. And Ubisoft had uh, 13 years from that point up to now to fix any of the enormous game-breaking bugs which cost us about an hour and a half's playtime in that game. They had all of this time, 13 straight years, to fix a single one of them. And did they? No. <laughs> no, they didn't. They didn't even update it any more than a couple of times either. I'm pretty sure there was, like, a couple of just crash to, to desktop fixes that was released. Uh, but other than that, nothing. Nothing. The community got nothing. In fact, I don't even think there's a From Dust community, quite frankly. Uh, that would be a laughable idea, to be quite fair. Ah. I was also being called halfway on stream. What, like on your phone? That sucks. I hate being called. Especially, I, uh, especially by unlisted numbers. Or even worse, by family members I just don't like. That's the worst. I hate that so much. All right, good. So I'm busting all of this out to kind of give us a little bit of access. So maybe we could kind of like snake down this way and find the bottom of the... M okay, that's also lava. Who's? Where do we want to be looking? Maybe not there. Ah, okay. So probably want to start going out this way, right? Okay. That is lava. All of this is lava, unfortunately. Doesn't really look like there's anywhere we can go ahead and plant our machinery, aside from, like, around the outskirts of here. It's just lava. Okay, so we would... If we were going to set up a mine down here, which we will have to, because it's the best location for resources, we would have to kind of, like, snake some conveyors around so that the machines actually do start hitting these patches... These weird little patches of dirt amongst all the lava. Which might not be very helpful, so... Maybe the plan is going to be not to go all the way down and kind of like fill out all of the pools of lava with snow and put the machines on top of that. Maybe. And then rake it. Huh. Lava here. Lava there. Lava is literally everywhere. You are not wrong, Liam. You are not wrong whatsoever. In fact, you are so right that we've just had to create a strategy to actually get around the fact that lava is... Literally everywhere. We're probably going to have to rake flat everything at the bottom layer here. And we'll just put a bunch of machines down. Uh, I don't know why I chose this line to fire the hole down, but it bends. I'm pretty sure what we should have done was create a giant chain of conveyor belts that just, like, goes in a spiral. Big lifts, big corners, and we have that going all the way up to topsoil. I think that maybe we can kind of, like... Chain it up from down here, right? Okay, I'll do a crouch and look up. Oh, yeah, we can send this all the way up to the top side. We're going to have to move the sorting system, though. No, we're not. We don't have to move the sorting system whatsoever. The lava is not required for the sorting system at all. So all we want to do is migrate the lava all the way down here, and we want to expand out the uh, pipes, don't we? We want to expand the pipes, basically just snake all the way down here so that we can set up a conveyor system, right? And fortunately, in what looks like in line of here and there seems to be a direct path down to this little cavern we've mined out too. So if we can do that, we can probably just shovel some snow underneath the bum bum of these machines which are pumping out resources. And that will allow us to get all of the best chunks possible without kind of like leaving everything in the lava. Because I'm pretty sure if we leave the machines in the lava, they're not actually going to mine up any resources whatsoever. Okay, let's kind of like fill this cavern out a little bit. We'll know exactly what we're doing if we do come back to this game at some point. Yep, makes sense. I love lava. Do you? Because yeah, there's no resources in the lava, unfortunately. There's literally no reason to love the lava in this game. Literally. How much was it to get your stream set up? Oh, it was expensive, my dude. I have been kind of like doing YouTube stuff as a hobby since 2018. I got kind of lucky with the, the boom of lockdown, but... Essentially, I've been investing money over and over again, probably once a month since then, to get this entire stream, the system that I'm looking at, that you guys are not looking at. I can tell you exactly what I've got right at the end here, while we kind of, like, look at this lava. Actually, I'll go up to the um, sorting system, and we'll kind of, like, look at what we've done. We'll watch this kind of work while I explain my setup. So, I have a few brand loyalties when it comes to streaming. Sennheiser and Rode. They have never let me down at all, whatsoever. So, what I'm using here is a Rode NT-USB. It was 250 bucks, that microphone alone. It's got an arm right here, which cost an additional $120. Uh, 
Um, I had to get an extra long cable that leads out of the bottom of this microphone so that it links into my computer. I also got a, a muffler right here on top of that. They were separate. Uh, so in total, close to 400 bucks just for the microphone alone. Uh, webcam, I have a Logitech Brio, which was an upgrade from a C922E, which I upgraded from a C920. In total, those three would have cost me round about six or seven hundred dollars for the whole thing. Uh, and I have, like, I've been getting cheap things, and then I've been gradually upgrading them as I've been able to afford to do so. I have a 4070 in my, a 4060 Ti, sorry, in my computer. That was very expensive. That's basically a necessity these days. You need a really powerful graphics card to be able to play games on stream and also stream it. I have two screens. I've got one for monitoring the streaming stuff. I've got a screen over here to play the games on. Together, they cost me about 300 bucks, which is actually really affordable. Like, really, really affordable. I was really lucky to get a 27-inch uh, curved screen on sale. And this little one I got for free from a Polytechnic, because a Polytechnic's... I was studying a Bachelor's of IT, and I found that every Polytech around the country actually has a gigantic room full of technology that they have to pay to get thrown away. Like, just really old computers, really, really old screens, really, really old keyboards and mice and stuff like that. So if you go on there and say, hey, um... Can I take a couple of screens? I'll take it off your hands. You won't have to pay for it to get disposed of. Uh, usually someone will go, oh, thank God, you're doing me a favor. So, you know, if you ever need a new screen for a computer, go to a, a Polytech or a university and ask them if they've got like a big room full of stuff that needs throwing away that you can kind of like poke around in. Uh, I got uh, brand loyalty to Logitech for my keyboard and mouse. A lot of people say that that's a bad idea, but Logitech, again, have never let me down once. The only thing that they've let me down on is the keyboard that I have right now, which was about 350 bucks. Mechanical keyboard. Does not have a notch on the W, so I keep misplacing my hand, uh, which means I keep changing the scenes like this every time I go ahead and uh, yeah, try and move around. I'll try to be here for every stream. Well, I mean, you're welcome to be here for as long as you want, Liam the Destroyer. I'm not going to go anywhere. Uh, what else? There's a few other things. I have a lot of software. A lot of software that uh, kind of runs in the background. A lot of it's free, though. A lot of it's free. So I've also invested a huge amount of time into learning how to kind of like use these free applications. Uh, I run my mic through something called voice mod. That was 40 bucks. I am able to put a voice changer on myself for that. It's just for fun. Just fun. It's not necessary, but it does kind of uh, work as a really, really good equalizer, compressor, limited noise gate and expander. So that's kind of why I got that on there as well. You're going to have to learn how to use OBS or Streamlabs OBS. I like Streamlabs OBS because they support uh, some keyboard hotkeys that OBS does not support. For example, control and then something that's just unbound on the computer organically. You can definitely uh, bind that. OBS doesn't allow you to do that without big scripting skills, and I don't really want to spend ages scripting in OBS, so I just use Streamlabs OBS. They're good enough for me. What else? Spotify is pretty essential to go in the background of the streams. That's going to be 15 bucks a month. So you're probably starting to see, right, the, the cost of things. It, it, gets real, it gets real high. I've probably spent about two grand on graphics cards since I started streaming. Uh, a grand and a half on motherboards and CPUs. RAM's really cheap. RAM is really cheap. That's probably something that I would say just upgrade as soon as you possibly can. Actually, no. Before that, get a really, really big computer case. It's worth spending 150 bucks on a really big computer case. Especially if you intend to upgrade the computer that's sitting inside of it. If you've got like a tiny computer that's in a huge computer case, it's way better than having a giant computer that's trying to fit uh, inside of a tiny computer case. And yeah, what did I miss? We are about to polish off this game for good. I was just explaining uh, kind of like the setup that I've got while I stream right here. And how much it costs. Because it's expensive. You know, someone asked. I'm going to ask. I'm, I'm going to tell you. I'm gonna, if someone asks a question, I'm going to answer it. So... I will be literally right back. I'm going to take a very quick break. Then we are going to polish off Hydronia. And we're going to start the last episode of Supermarket Simulator until potentially it leaves early access. So I'm going to do an outro. It's not going to be permanent. I'm going to do an outro. I'm going to go and have a, a quick break for a few seconds. And then I'm going to come back. We're going to play Supermarket Simulator. All right? Excellent. So thank you so much for watching. Right up here, you're going to find the playlist for Hydronia. And right up here... You can find another playlist that I think you'd really enjoy down in the description of this video. You're going to find a link to my Discord where you can talk to me and my community personally. And it's growing. Why not come in? Say hi. And of course, until I make the next episode or you catch the next stream, I will see you in the next one. Thank you so much for watching again and goodbye.